Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Got there, hey everyone! We did it. We made it. Welcome to the pr- vice presidential debate. I'm just kidding. Sorry, <laughs> that is happening right now. We we yeah. are we are avoiding that. <laughs> Welcome to yeah. Four Player Podcast. We're actually here to talk about video games. Uh, it is what day, what day is this? October. This is October first. Have Halloween all month, right? That's how the, that's how October. That's how spooky season works. October first. The season. Spook- Tis the season for. Spooky stuff. Um, it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, Br- Brad, you you, you got you one got player, good... Nick. One uh, player. I fucking hate, hate you. <laughs> God, we... what's up, Nick? Damn it! Did he just I kicked him out ghost? of the channel? Oh, okay. <laughs> I kicked him out. <laughs> I yeah, was like, this motherfucker just ghosted us in the middle of the call. Anyways, welcome to the show. Uh, I'll do it again. Yeah, that was a clever callback to a previous joke. It wasn't a, me launching into a rant. It was but nobody fucking listening to this show knows what you're talking about, Brad, because they weren't here when we recorded it live. So they don't that, get it. That's and like they never half will. The content on our Which, podcast. that's a good point you make, Nolan, because we do record these podcasts live on Tuesday night over at twitch.tv mm, slash four player podcast. You got to show up live for the in jokes. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If, 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 you know, if you're into that kind of thing. But, anyways, uh, like I said, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Nick. I'm joined by Brad, Nolan, Chris Davis. They're here. Hello. Hi. So, Sorry, this is. This is a very, um, I haven't found my rhythm yet, and that's, I'm just kind of rolling with it, so, yeah. I don't blame you. Weird show. That's all right, yeah. Um, what's been up, guys? Mm, How's it, go- spooky how's it going? Season. I got Zelda for free today. Not really free. Not really free. I realized, I was like, oh shit, I completely forgot Zelda was actually out, and I was like, I should probably be playing this. Um, and it'd be great because I, I don't really currently have anything to play on my, on on the go at the moment. So I was like, yeah, I sh- time to get Zelda. And I realized I had a I had a GameStop trade in credit card floating in my in my car, which is kind of in my center console. And I was like, I'll just run to GameStop real quick on my lunch break, and I'll use whatever I have on that card and pick up Zelda. It covered the whole fucking thing. Hmm. I had no idea, and I wow. I don't even know what I traded in to get it. it must have been pretty good. <laughs> I bet uh, it was Rise of the Ronin. That's what it was. No, I haven't traded that in yet. I don't think. How many copies of Zelda were there? Dude, let me I tell you. I feel like I'm not hearing let, many people talk I'm about this one. So I, I hate it's the one with question. the girl. and the ones. I'm so happy you asked that question because, uh, not for the reason you're thinking, but like, as someone who used to work at GameStop, and it's been a very, it's been a very long time since I worked at It's been over 12 years, 13 years since I worked at GameStop. Um to, to walk into the store when it's in the state that it, that company is in the kind of in the state that it's in and it's kind of like on the decline or whatever. First of all, mm-hmm. every time I go in there, there's like almost no there's usually nobody in there, like customer wise, maybe one person just kind of browsing Two, there's only ever like one person working at the store at a time. There used to be always a minimum of two. Yeah, people and they probably the have store. a single eight hour shift as well. That's why the hours are so shifted. Right. And this and this this dude at the counter. And I mean, this is his job. Right. But I'm just saying it's, you know, I remember 13 years ago, the fucking shenanigans that company tries to get people to pull off. Because I was like, I'm just here to pick up Zelda. And he did the whole thing was like, oh, did you have it reserved? And I was like, I did not. He was like, "Okay, well, let me see if we have an extra copy for you. And did the whole the whole fucking song and dance where he walked over there and then looked in the drawer and was like, ah, I guess it'll be fine. I guess it'll be fine. And I was like, you 
fucking To be fair, it does say Legend of Zelda on the box. That would be like a series where maybe they sold all their copies. I guess my point was that this one maybe they, is but, not. But like, exactly here's the thing. The, the only time you ever ended up in cases like that, and no, someone who right. worked at GameStop for seven years, the only time that you, you were ever actually potentially out of copies of a game when someone didn't pre-order it was when the game had almost no pre-orders. So they sent you like three copies. And then people show right. up. All, all he was doing was trying to incept Nick to be like, next time, Nick's going to be like, oh, they, oh, they yeah. said they were almost I out. I should probably pre-order. That's Which all is, he was doing. It was such bullshit. And I was like, I know I know that drawer back there is just filled, overflowing with <laughs> Zelda copies. I fucking know it. Uh, anyways, that's that's my rant for the night. I just I was just shocked just to hear like to knowing what's going on with GameStop to kind of see those shenanigans still happening on a. Are you saying the it was one crazy. employee and one customer and one copy of Zelda? Yeah. Yes, I oh, was. God damn! I walked right into that again. Wonder, in jokes, folks. In jokes. No, you what? got a hotkey that eject button. You got to do that. How this one's doing? Right. Oh, how uh, Zelda is doing? Da- if Chris Davis had the Brad eject key, how often do you think I'd be ejected from the podcast? I mean, more I mean, recently, you... probably more often. <laughs> so yeah. You probably wouldn't be on very many shows. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, I almost uh, called in sick. I actually didn't for your for you, Nick. <laughs> but well, what do you mean for me? What what, 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 what do I have? Good. What do I have to do with it? Look, How dare friends, you, man? Um, which. Sorry, go ahead. Where are we go? Oh, you, no, I don't have a game plan tonight. This is flying by. The, I'm seating my pants. Tonight the game here. plan is we're playing sweet games. We were talking about Zelda. Why don't we just go and launch into? Let's, or no, spooky season. I, I saw a, I saw a movie that I never even heard about before. Is this the one you mentioned the other day? That I've already forgotten the title of. Yeah, but we were not on a podcast. We were at dinner. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and it's it's the, it's the one I mentioned. I watched it this weekend called. Tragedy Girls, I think it's called. Oh yeah, mm. Tragedy Girls, which is a like a horror comedy. Um, two teen girls, but they're like killing people. It's so so the way I I, I the way I frame it is, is is like imagine like Scream One or whatever, for, but from like pr- the perspective of the two teenagers that are killing there people. Is. Gotcha. And it's yeah. like a okay. it's like a comedy. It's it's edgy. It's kind of like Heather's, but a uh, horror. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I think Tragedy I'm gonna add Girls. that to my list. I think it I'm wasn't watch like you know one. a knockout. You know, but like I like to have that sort of variety in my. I don't like all just pure horror during the Halloween season. I like having you know some comedy stuff in there. And there's not like a ton of horror comedy. I mean, it exists, but horror comedy is usually like one note or a certain kind. I mean, I don't know. This seemed, it felt, this one felt a little unique. So uh, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I, on the flip side of that, this is not a movie I recommend, but I, you know, I was like, I'm going to start watching more horror movies. It's October. It's time for spooky season. And I was going through my list. I have like a long list of horror movies that I like. I just want to, I wanted to watch cause I haven't seen them. And I just picked one at random. And it's actually the only one I could find at the moment. That wasn't like, that was like available on streaming. Uh, and I watched Splice. Let me tell you, mm. I reg- I don't. E- there's not many times in my life where I've watched a movie and then been like, I regret the time spent watching this film. But man, I regret watching Splice. It seemed so straightforward. It seemed like okay, there's, it's a monster movie. It's about the dangers of 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 humans, you know. With pa- the power of science doing stupid shit and then paying for it, right? You, they're they're going to mm-hmm. genetically engineer a monster and it's going to turn on everybody and kill them, right? That's what I thought this was. It is not that. It, it was a Frankenstein. Into, it turned, tell as old as time. No, it turned into some weird, like, shape of water shit, if you know what I mean. Um, mm. So, yeah. Whew. I, spooky season, not shape off to of a great start. Shape of Oscar. You're saying this is Oscar caliber? <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely not Oscar. Shape of Water is a great film. I was more referring to kind of like, you know, the fish fucking. I know what you're referring to. Fish I mean, fucking. yeah, it was more like the fish, fish fucking, fucking, right? Well, well Nick, uh, that is the splice fucking. of life. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. that. Um, but then I did, I did go see the the remake of Speak No Evil, which is really good. Um, Highly recommend. Calling it a remake is a little weird because I don't think most people know about the original. 
it's but it's, it is it's a, a remake. It is a remake. It's a it, it's, but it, it it came out so close to the original because the the original oh, is came that out true? in twenty twenty two. It's been oh, two wow. years, but the I the original I think is Danish. It's a Danish film, so this yeah. is just the American version, and it's just gotcha. so close okay. together. Um, but very good. Uh, but you know me, like I like. Why does cringe. that still happen? Why why what? do we like make American versions of, of of foreign films like a year later? I don't know. It's I it get is it weird. if it's like a twenty year old movie. Uh, you know, like some infernal affairs, like departed yeah. shit. I don't even know that wasn't even twenty years. I was probably like ten. Uh, yeah. but still, like, j- just just watch the foreign movie. It, yeah, you know, it's, no, it, it's, for, it's pretty famous for like, ho- like with horror movies. I feel like especially famously bad American remakes was like yeah. a thing for a while. And like to me, I feel like The Ring was sort of like bucked that trend because. You know, it was that's like one of the few good. like American remakes that was like really good, but yeah. like most of the time they were like fucking terrible. Um, yeah, that's this right. This one was pretty. Um, the, this one I, I thought was pretty interesting, but the trailer just was the entire yeah, movie. I, I will say this, and this is kind of the same thing because that movie that Brad recommended a few weeks ago, Oddity, which I ended up watching, and he he stopped me just in time. He was like, "Don't watch a trailer," and I was like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> Didn't watch a trailer. Watched the movie. Then watched the trailer after I watched the movie. I was like, oh, shit, I'm super glad I didn't watch this trailer. Mm-hmm. But I've mm-hmm. since gotten like three or four other people to watch that movie. And I was like, don't watch the trailer. And everyone's like, oh, man, it's pretty good. Yeah, this is kind of the same situation uh, with Speak No Evil. But let me tell you, it's a pretty good movie. But I just wanted to point. So, like, I get really uncomfortable with cringe, right? Like with like uncomfortable social situations, right? Mm-hmm. This this movie, like Triple. the first hour and a half of this movie is basically like the horror version of meet the parents oh, not wow. the exact not the exact scenario but like as the like the, the level of awkwardness of just like people in what's, really terrible situations and it's just like they're slowly that? realizing what's going on yeah it that, i get vibes from that trailer i watched in that new james back mcavoy movie that's about to come out that is the movie that's the that movie. is the one that's that the one, the one, the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's speak no okay. evil. Well, yeah. Never mind. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Wait, also, no, meet the was, parents was, was the horror version of. Yeah, no, it's 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 really good, but it's just okay. You, what the <laughs> vibes you were realize. getting from the trailer is literally okay. what I'm talking about. Like the whole like the okay. first hour and a half is just me going like, we just like That's... constantly. Oh my god, it it's pretty good though. Uh, yeah. So October first, spooky season. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Silent Hill two comes out. In a, a week, yep. I'm very excited for that. That's super, super exciting. Um, and maybe, maybe I don't know about y'all. I might try and stream a couple things. So, Nick, are you are, related? Have you been following any of the Silent Hill talk today? Mm-hmm. Uh, not but, talk. So, I mean, well, it's more than talk. Copies of the game are out there, and people yeah. are like basically playing the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, is people seem pretty pleased. Good, good. Now, good. Uh, the the one thing I have been really following because Dust Golem always does these really great deep dives into horror games, and he's a big Silent Hill. He person. he showed leaked a bunch of footage. Yeah, he did, and, but he also like marks it where he's like, if you don't want the game spoiled for you, get the next message. But yeah. but he did like a sixty five tweet thread talking about all the stuff they showed at TGS, just kind of analyzing it and going. And I read almost that oh. entire thing, and I was like, okay, this oh, is was, this is looking yeah. and sounding pretty good. I'm. I'm getting I'm getting pretty excited. It's very Silent Hill. So like if you don't like Silent Hill and you're like a Luckily, Resident Evil girly or something, I don't I do. think this is going to like change your mind. But I, mean, I, very I feel like if they were like, trying to change good people, if, they were, if they were trying to sway people into thinking Silent Hill was like Resident Evil, I think it would have been a, I think they would have no, missed no, the no, point, no, right? It would have no, been kind of a failure. That's not what I mean sense. necessarily. I just mean like I was watching it and I'm like, yeah, this is Silent Hill. I, I was kind of maybe hoping for like Oh, they did this with the game? That's crazy. But I, I didn't like watch enough of that footage. I was kind of skimming around. Well, that, but that's also I'm like curious. the thing that people are like desperately hoping that they don't. Go well, I mean, in terms of the story, I mean, in far. terms of of like you know gameplay or whatever structure, you know. They've been sharing a lot of like short clips of gameplay and stuff, and I feel fine watching those. I don't feel like those are too spoilerific, but I'm seeing more of the combat and stuff. And I was like, this looks pretty nice. Like, and like, like it just looks more responsive and less of a chore to, to, to play 
from from the combat standpoint. So I don't know. There's still it's, a lot of rooms and apartment buildings and hospitals a, and, and it business. sounds like it's Hill. that first that the original Silent Hill Two is a game you can probably finish in like four to five, four to five hours, four to four to six hours somewhere in there. And like there's an achievement on the list on on the, the remake that's like something called like something speedrunners or something like that, and yeah. you get it for beating the game in under ten hours. So it's like hmm. okay. That, that tells you maybe something about kind of like did the scope either of you. y'all any of y'all click on that Easter egg that I posted a screenshot of from that footage? I posted it mm. and I did like spoiler tag the picture and I'm like, oh, I did see this Easter egg. It's not like a major spoiler, but I thought it was pretty clever. Um, I can let I can maybe not say it if you don't want me to, but I thought it was pretty funny given the discourse surrounding the. I know, I'm I'm fine with it. I mean. Uh, let's I'm not worried about spoilers too much because I mean it you'll is, know what it I'm talking about. Okay, well, a certain character wearing a certain outfit mm-hmm. uh, that people were unhappy about, right? Went to a closet and held up an outfit. Like, hey, James, what do you think of this one? <laughs> nice, <laughs> and it was okay. that outfit. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's... And the, the the funny thing is the dev- developer probably had that scene in there the whole time. While all this discourse is happening, I don't know. It, it was a bit like, of a well, it was a bit of a Dante with the white wig. Yeah, for yeah. A million years, and but it wasn't that, played that for, for like too. cheesy laughs or whatever. It was more just, it was more just like an Easter egg, like an honest Easter egg. But um, now it has different context. Less of a joke designed to piss people off, <laughs> like the Dante yeah. one. Dante is what we call him, by the way, Nick. Sorry, mm, I, I don't call him that. I, I loved, I, I that. loved that moment in, I know. in Devil May Cry and DMC. It's fine. That's so fun. good. But, but Dante was such a clever pun. Yeah, <laughs> I think I people guess. were calling him. I feel like the height of calling him Dante is when he was in PlayStation All Stars <laughs> as one of the third party characters. They got Dante, but it was Dante, and I was like, oh man, that's the one you got. That game was fucked up. Such disrespect. Wait, which which <laughs> game? Which which game are we talking about? Which game was PlayStation All Stars? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, well, like some sure. of the choices they got in the roster. <laughs> what them making off the like weird random choices with their rosters? Yeah, to says get hi. to get to get Dante instead of Dante when you're trying to represent like famous even third party PlayStation characters. Hey, at least Astrobot has around. the original Dante in it, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was good too, man. Th- those animations are so good, so good. And also, like oh, that man. probably was cat. We gotta do like a design more. We gotta do else. an award at the end of the year. We gotta do like a for the best like award we give to our to our favorite uh, Astrobot character animation. animation or something. Yeah, I need Sorry. to play the game. Chris Davis. Chris yeah. Davis. <laughs> what? It's fine. Chris Davis. It's fine. First, you, it's first fine. you tell us. You, for, it's He's fine. All week. Why would we expect him to be interested in this one when he he had a free Astrobot game sitting on his PS5 and he never? And he still hasn't played. Up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He he had it. Everyone had it, and he didn't bother booting it up. That says all you need to say, really. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, all week PlayStation playing. nostalgia is not exactly what Chris Davis is chasing. If you know hey, what he, I mean. I'm gonna. I I, I specifically. T- I am getting in the mood for for various. This is the first um, Halloween or the first year Halloween season uh, since the release of Alan Wake 2. And I am immediately in the mood to play Alan Wake 2. Um, well, good in news, October. Nick. Uh, I mean, I'm going to I have not played Final Draft and I'm looking forward to the Lake House DLC. So I figured I would start my replay of that here pretty soon. I'm just trying to finish off Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth um, pretty quickly here. Hey, uh, if you play the final where, where are you draft, in that without without elaborate I mean without just tell me I, j- I just got to chapter twelve last night. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, twelve. I just got the the boat or the the quote unquote the boat. Oh yeah, that's the last open area. You can go to the yeah. end game to the yeah. last part of the game if you. But want. I'm still doing a couple things. Okay, you know. Okay, you can go. But back, I'm, but no, I'm gonna no finish it. Back. Gonna... But but they they do make it to where you can go back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Chris Davis, real quick. If there was like a brute force Astrobot, like bot reference, would you like pop for that? I never played brute like a force, like a so. a blood wake bot. I'm I'm not that big an X bot, Brad. Fusion frenzy. 
<laughs> you got, you you got keep positive naming feelings Xbox for games I've never played. Uh, Sudeki? <laughs> keep going. Oh, yeah, Sudeki's good. No, I haven't there. played Sudeki. I'm saying keep Half going. You're not, oh. You haven't found a game yet. You never played Sudeki? No. All right, whatever. Whatever. Never mind. I'm not Anyways, playing into your in. Xbox ploy like you want me to. Uh, let's 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 I'm pull one out of my ass. Uh, grab by the ghoulies. <laughs> ah, that was too no. big. <laughs> nope. Yeah. You never play grab by the ghoulies? No. Really? What was the voodoo vents? No. Oh, he does hate platformers. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that tracks, man. He shot down every platformer. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, no, let's uh, let's let's get back on track here. I, we, we did start with talking about Zelda, and it is Zelda week. Echoes of Wisdom is out in the wild. That's kind Brad, of a Nolan budget looking high roll you got behind you, uh, Nolan. Why? <laughs> is that where we're budget. starting this? Do yeah, yeah. you think it looks? Do you think the game looks budget, Brad? I mean, I do. Well, so so, I think there's two classifications of Switch games. I was talking a little bit about this for the show. I think there are Nintendo puts out Switch games, Switch console games, and Switch handheld games. Even though they're both the same system, remember this is a studio that a company that used to have a handheld on a console, and I feel like that didn't completely go away when they unified into one system. And like, mm-hmm. this is definitely the game that would be on the 3DS, if you know what I mean. Uh, while like obviously Tears of the Kingdom is the fucking console game, and it's not, the, I'm not trying to call this a spinoff. You're, call, you're calling I, I'm just this, like try- Triforce Heroes or something like that. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. I'm calling this like in a link between worlds, but like this is the handheld game, if you know what I mean. So yes, it doesn't look like Tears of the Kingdom. It doesn't run like Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, maybe it runs worse. What is? Go- Wait, you you're still in that first dungeon. Well, you did a little bit of the overworld, right? Uh, yeah, I've done I've done some overworld, and I, I did a little bit of exploring after the first dungeon. Yeah, uh, Nick, you played Link's Awakening. Yeah. So this is Grezzo, the same developer. It's got yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Issues, I to... Like the like there's streaming issues in the in the overworld. It gets choppy, and I d- don't understand. And Tears of the Kingdom gets choppy, but like. That makes sense, right? It's a fucking switch, and they're doing a lot. This is like more of like a, you know, like like a, like a Pokemon game. It's like this well, seems like more of an why engine struggling issue, so hard here. You know, it's, no, not, this clearly it uses not a, a different engine, engine. This is like a programmer issue or something. You know, like well, this. Of course, this feels like a be... game that didn't need to have that. Of course, the, there's going to be some skill level there issues. in terms of developer, but I'm just saying, like, it's a skill issue. Yeah, it's yeah. a skill issue. I mean, I like. first of all, let me just say. I actually I'm, don't I know. know. That sounds mean. I know I'm not trying mean, to talk but... shit about the developers because they're they're clearly very talented. I'm just saying. I mean, there's, there are different you... factors here that that contribute to the technical performance differences between well, this and Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, sure. That might but, be yeah, fascinating Pokemon Pokemon part about this project is this is like... Grezzo's this is Grezzo's first original Zelda game. Like, not just that, but they're a studio that does like remakes and remasters. This mm-hmm. is the they're like the blue point. Like, oh, we're going to work on an original game now. Can they make their own Bloodborne or whatever the fuck? And everyone's like, oh, maybe, maybe just remake Bloodborne 1, you know? It's like, do we want them to do Bloodborne 2? This is Grezzo doing their own fucking Zelda game. And I know with Nintendo, there's a lot of like, you know, first party hands support and just like maybe some steering, you know, like with Metroid and like Mercury Steam or something or... You know, there's been third party Zelda games for decades. Um, sure. Th- second party, whatever you want to call it. But but this is a. Uh, that could be why, you know, it's a smaller studio. Maybe they're not as like like some of the programmers at like Nintendo first party. They're like fucking wizards, right? It's like, how did you get Tears of the Kingdom yeah. to work on a switch? And this they is a little more. Soul. <laughs> this is it's giving a little more Pokemon company and no offense Nolan I know you love Pokemon but obviously it's like come on dude, dude why do your games no. run like shit no I mean, you, it's it, just... like yes I, I I do love Pokemon but yes Game Freak I don't understand what they do with their billions of dollars uh, <laughs> because Scarlet and Violet run like shit yeah uh, and it is insane how poorly that game runs I mean when you think about the fact that this Nintendo hardware is 
over seven years old now, and it wasn't exactly cutting edge technology when they released it in the first place. No, like, but what when you, it's but when the the Kingdom, it's the but when Tears of the Kingdom exists, that argument kind but, of becomes like yeah, a moot but, point. But you can also you can also flip that argument and say, look at Rockstar, uh, a company that sells a shit ton of games and makes a lot of money. And it takes eight years on a random guy on the internet to fix their GTA five load screen. <laughs> That's not a fake I mean, story. It's real. The, the G- GTA five load screen took like two minutes and some guy on the internet got fed up with it, patched it, made a fix and got it like, like got it down to like a happens quarter with of from soft games as well. Right. Like what, but it's just what's one of those things became where companies... famous from uh, fixing yeah. uh, Dark Souls games. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just companies have certain things that there are th- that this is what they're focusing on. This is what you know management tells them to do. Blah blah blah. I'm not I'm not excusing it. It definitely sucks. Um, but it's like, hey, you know, they they had their their deadline and their limit, and like the game kind of runs shitty, and they're like, oh well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know they're developing not on the Switch itself, so they might have a little more power in whatever they're developing it on, and so it potentially runs a little bit better. Uh, during development and then by the time it gets put on the switch like oh crap it kind of runs a little could run a little better what can we do to fix it and it's like oh we don't have time all right it runs and i don't i don't mean to harp on the negative i I will say that i um i didn't really play too much that link's awakening remake um but i adore a link between worlds and one of the things make that as well no 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 no. that was first party nintendo yeah 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 and and uh, the thing about I think they did Triforce Heroes though, um, which is an original game I guess. Uh, but the thing is, uh, a Link Between Worlds is so smooth. Like and in fact, like yeah. how smooth that game plays and looks and feels is like half of what makes that game so fucking amazing, in my opinion. Like it's just such a beautiful, smooth game. And people were kind of like poo pooing the art style early on, and this kind of shares a similar. I feel like it's a little bit between that Link's Awakening remake and a little bit like um, that Link Between Worlds. But yeah, it is a 2D Zelda game. Or I'm sorry. I know, Nick, you have issues with me calling it a 2D Zelda game. But we mean like an old school isometric Zelda game. But it has like big Breath of the Wild energy where we're going to give you like a lot of access to a lot of tools and items. And we're just going to let you figure it out. With that said... I kind of like uh, the, this little puzzle where I'm trying to get this chest and I'm just spamming beds. <laughs> I, 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 I'm in the early parts of this game, the very early parts. And like the early parts of like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, it can be really frustrating until you really like start building the muscle memory for like the UI and, and the way you, so, you interact with th- items. Thank you for like, bringing I'm that up, Brad. Still. Yeah, so myself as well, and you're probably, I don't know, maybe an hour more, maybe two hours more into the game than I am. But yes, I am still, I constantly press the wrong buttons Mm -hmm. um, to pull up the tools and stuff like that to the point where I almost wish I could I could remap them. Because clearly my brain wants to click this button to do this and wants to click this button to do that. And I keep constantly swapping them. Um, and, And so, yeah, like there's there's so many times where I want to pull up my menu to select items I want to spawn and I accidentally press the button that despawns items uh, or, you you know, it's just one of those things where, yeah, there is a lot of nuance to how you interact with this fairly complex system Mm -hmm. of spawning items, uh, creating items, selecting items, uh, using uh, uh, try uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, um, uh, what is try take over uh, your little, try your is little, little floating friend, little, oh, the friend gotcha. that floats behind you. So try is actually what okay. is creating mm-hmm. these objects. Uh, try, mm-hmm. if you notice when Brad has no objects created, try has some little triangles, some triforce, whatever mm-hmm. objects and behind each one is an, them. is an item you can and generate. Each, yeah. Sort of. And so as you, so after, you're, yeah, the, you're, you're limited into that number. When you start the game, you can only do three. After you beat the first dungeon, you get a fourth one. So now not only can you create more objects, but if you look at the menu that you see uh, on the screen, uh, if you're watching us live at twitch.tv slash um, the player, uh, uh, some objects take more um, of those triangles or those little triforces, whatever, mm. to create. So some of them are three and so obviously at the beginning of the game, you only create one of them and no other objects. And as soon as you try to create another object, the previous one despawns. Um, but like I said, the menu to, to do that, 
uh, is you press the hold on my controllers right here because I can't remember. You press the Y button uh, to bring up your menu to select something, but then you press the right trigger um, to create it in or the left trigger. I can't remember. Um, and then you press a different button uh, a, a combination to have try uh, kind of take over an object because there are certain puzzles you have to do by taking over them. And then you press a different button to move the object versus you moving with the object. Yeah. It, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's very weird. complex. It is. Oh, so, so that's the thing. It's the bind ability, right? So, and I was surprised that they gave it to you so early. And to me, that suggests like, Oh, big, breath of the wild energy they're going to give you lots of tools early on and say figure out how to use them and it is the world cool is yours yeah. once you start figuring out some tricks and i realized some tricks early on and i was kind of excited about it um i remember in our discord some uh, prince or somebody posted a video of like 15 things i bet i bet you didn't know you can do i specifically didn't watch that video because i think finding that stuff out on your own like with tears it's of the kingdom the is sauce. like super cool I can give like a couple of examples just to kind of show you like the potential of it. But like with the bind, you can like basically free th things. And as you move, it moves. Or if you hold down a, tr a trigger button or whatever, uh, as it moves, you move with it. Right. That's like the two modes you have for that bind. But the way you start mixing and mass matching, like you will you can summon monsters, right? Like not just beds and items, but you can also start capturing monsters and you can summon them in battle. But like sometimes the AI is like a little slow. They're not slashing, but you could just bind that enemy and start moving it around yourself um, to like, you know, actually move the your guy out of range of getting hit and then moving them back in for him to like swing. Right. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of neat. But then I started like binding the enemy and then letting that my guy like attack him from like behind while I had the enemy frozen. So you have freedom to kind of play with those moves and in, in neat ways. Kind of that's a time more. relevant question. Um, yeah. Watching the footage right now of, cause this is Brad's footage. Is there a reason you couldn't bind to that chest? I have no idea. I'm just bumbling or around. Or you just forgot? You forgot you could? Yeah, I mean, I played this yesterday, and then I'm like, okay, let's that, record some footage so of this really I'm, complex game that I'm early on, and I was just kind of I'm, bumbling I'm, around. No, you're, I also, you're, I, I, yeah. I, I, maybe I was. I don't, I don't know if maybe you couldn't. Maybe there was something that was stopping you from doing it. Possible. Because yeah. one of the things you could do, Nick, in theory, is you sh you could have bind, so you essentially get try to go over to that object. Now there's a link between you and that object, and if mm -hmm. you press the right bumper if that object were to move it would kind of pull you along with it or if you press the right trigger if you move you pull that item along with you provided you can there are some objects that are too big or like maybe enemies you can't really necessarily move them too much uh, but yeah, in theory, that I was sounds like, like that sounds like mm -hmm. an ability that if you're not careful could start breaking the game in some pretty uh but, but that's that's the idea that's the tears yeah. of the kingdom or the breath of the wild uh ethos right that would just is, make it so that you could literally bind to any like chest that's out of reach and just move. but they, well, they so find you, ways to make so it puzzly yeah mm -hmm. it, it they, they find ways to make it like tricky right like oh yeah. i guess i can't use the same method i've used before because of for this reason or this reason uh you know one of the remember my four player minute last week was i'm a little worried that like all this freedom is nice but if the game is too easy like i imagine it would be that can i just rely on the same bullshit tactics over and over again and yeah. like my, my, my i have two kind of like answers to my fears so far from what i experienced one is that in terms of like difficulty there's actually straight up a difficulty mode that you can change anytime you want in the menu which is unheard of for a zelda game it's always hero mode is unlocked when you finish the game you could turn on hero mode right away and i did which means hearts aren't dropping uh you know i'm taking way more damage and i'm a little like unsure if that's necessarily what i want from this game because the other thing is that and I'm like sleeping in beds to regain my health. And that's like just taking a lot of time. So I'm like, the I don't game, know. Brad. But the other thing is that like everything feels a lot more puzzly. It, and like in terms of uh, the moment to moment and like the way it's paced when you're going through a dungeon. I mean, obviously a Zelda dungeon is filled with puzzles, but like to me, that feels like a dungeon where you go into a room and there's like a puzzle to solve in this room. And then you got to get out of here here. It feels paced more like a 
like a puzzle platformer where you're constantly coming across like little like, oh, okay, how do I get this chest or how do I just get up to that ledge? And it, it's paced in such a way where you're just like constantly coming across little tiny puzzles that use your mechanics in like interesting ways versus like grand puzzles in a traditional Zelda game. And I'm kind of vibing with that pacing, honestly. And I mean, I imagine there are those those grander puzzles though, right? There's just a lot. I mean, I imagine but... when, once you get to like later dungeons, right? Like the first dungeon in this game is not even really. I mean, it doesn't even feel like a dungeon, really. It's the only re- yeah. way you know it's a dungeon is because it tells you it's a dungeon, and there's like a one first it's floor, second floor kind of thing, honestly. Um, but you know, we're so early. I'm. I mean, I, I'm. I'm really am not much further than Nolan. I'm just yeah. kind of wandering to the next up uh, uh, checkpoint, and I'm just kind of having fun getting the feel for all the mechanics as I discover new things. Another thing I, I did you, you come across that roly poly enemy that like rolls forward. I don't Um, know if I have yet. So one of the cool things about exploring is I found a cave with like a really powerful, like it wasn't a boss or wasn't even a mini boss, but it just seemed like a really powerful enemy. I captured that. It's that big spinning one. Right. And Mm -hmm. as, as a thing I could summon, it seemed really powerful. And it was, it almost felt like overpowered. But then as I got a little further, the enemy started to like beat up on that thing pretty bad. But I came I came across one enemy that's like an armadillo that rolls kind of thing. It rolls fat fast and forward. Um two two things. One, I realized I can bind to that and you can use it to get around faster, which is cool. That's because good. remember, you can bind to something and then like follow its movement. And this thing just sort of kept going when I was out in the overworld. I was like, oh, they know what they're doing. There's some cool stuff here. The other thing is I was doing a um mini game that i found in like the desert town here where you had to um you just had to like slash all the fruits or whatever before the time ran out but i was i was able to throw out a couple of these rolly guys that were just sort of like bouncing back and forth and they were hitting fruits while i was like slashing fruits in another part of the screen and i'm like Mm. okay there's some clever stuff happening here maybe i'll eventually watch like that prince of the universe video to kind of get some even more clever stuff but right now i'm just sort of vibing with what is the Prince of the stuff. Universe video? No, no, the, 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 I'm about, sorry. The, yeah. the one I was talking about where he said like 15, I think it was a boomstick game oh, video or something. The, 15 gotcha. things you didn't know you could do. Okay. You know? I thought you were suggesting I, I the love Prince of the Universe videos, already finished but, the game and made a video about it or something. I mean, who knows? Uh, um, te- it's possible. It seems feasible. Technical question for me. Uh, in watching this footage, huh? and forgive me, you may have mentioned this already. When you go in to summon an item through try, like you're having to do a lot of like going through menuing and trying to find the objects you want. Can you yeah, not do any the, kind of like favoriting or anything like that? So so there is there is like filters that you can cycle through by tapping the button like, oh, most recently used, most used item, uh, order by type. But I will say it is not elegant and you get a yeah. lot of items very quickly. Yeah, and it could have. You know, if you've played a game like a, like a V Rising or something where like you build a lot co- complex stuff, you know, you're you're cycling cycling through like various tiers of types and stuff, and they make ways of kind of getting to what you need like pretty easy. This mm-hmm. game is not doing that. It's very much like that kind of te- Breath of the Wild awkwardness with like you just have a big long line of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, like it's that awkward. makes sense. In Breath in of the Breath Wild, of the they kind of because... sped it up here. It feels a little clunky. Yeah, it, I mean, it makes sense in some aspects of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom because you can only hold so many weapons, so you don't have to scroll that far. But we're talking about, it looks like upwards of 100 items, if not more. I was sitting here like, thinking, like, y'all are early? Why do you have, like, 50 items you that you get can already stuff spawn? Quick. You get I mean, stuff that's, fucking quick. I guess on Pretty much one every enemy good, you come but... across, object you come across, you just start to be, create it. it. It got a little weird where I was like, because clutter's going to be an issue... I came across another bed and I was like in the, like the Gerudo bed. And I'm like, do I even want to add this to my fucking menu? That's just one more bed I have to cycle through. But sure enough, it was a soft bed and I regained my hearts a little bit quicker. Now I wish I could actually like, and maybe you can, I wish I could boot shit from my menu or like, yeah, it it would be nice. Some shit. It it would be nice if like, like Chris Davis said, just like a favorites. 
Like, this is the stuff I care about. And if I ever want to look at other stuff, can. I will then move over to that. I guess maybe I just don't even have enough yet. Um, Chris Davis, to your point, by default, it just defaults to your, like, the first four items in your list are the last four things you used. And then everything after that is in order. Uh, that's like the default thing. So, yes, if you're in a dungeon or you're doing a certain thing, you might be using the same items a bunch. So it quickly gets you uh, to the most recently used ones. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I've not played with the favorites too much right now. So I don't know um, to the extent that you can like favorite items. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, mean, I actually that... look at the the four, the four uh, sorting things because I have opened right now. There's the sorting are last used, most used, last learned and cost oh no there's a fifth one and type but you cycled mm -hmm. through those by just like tapping the button it really needed like like a maybe some vertical scrolling and, or something it's it's a little awkward because it's hard to even know which one you're on a little unwieldy it's unwieldy hmm. yeah but here's, here's a question you know. simple question it's zelda how uh how's the music actually it's, no it's not it's not it hasn't been that memorable it's, it's yet fine. in my opinion yeah also, I, I, I agree that nothing, uh, nothing about the music has been like, oh, this is amazing. But also, you know, I would think of it more, more like, you know, like Brad said, like a link between worlds or something like that, where you're not really safe. in these big grandiose era areas and stuff. And like, there's not too many like big cut scenes so far that are happening. I think the music has been fine. Uh, but yeah, nothing has been super memorable quite okay. yet. I will say the link between worlds soundtrack kind of ripped like immediately, though. I, I really like that one. Um, I realized the other day that also, I also bought that game, so I'm gonna I'm a gonna little unexpected, person. in my opinion. And and you, Nolan, you'll see more of it when you get out of that first dungeon. Mm -hmm. This game can be weirdly talky. Now I know I'm really early, but I feel like I'm buttoning through more dialogue than the typical Zelda game, which is a strange thing. Maybe it's because Zelda's a princess and she like listens to a lot of people. I don't know, but. It's um, you know, you got to hear the people's <laughs> complaints no, and stuff. I didn't know no what a princess does. That. No one's like, I don't know if that's sexist, but it sounds like it might. She's be a sexist. political figure. I mean, what do you want? It's it's a princess. Oh, a political figure. Okay. okay. I'm saying you got to listen to the fucking that's, people. That's different. We thought you what were you going I was, a different direction. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. It's neat, but I ultimately I just need to play a lot more. Cool. Well, I'm going to be well, playing some of this for sure. as well. And, and to, for yeah. what little I've played, agreed that so far I have been enjoying it. It has been clunky. It's one of those things where I don't know if I'm going to, if that's going to become a bigger issue than it has been. Um, it hasn't been too bad so far, but I have way less items than Brad. Um, probably just because I've not been in just like straight up. The, the first kind of part of the game is fairly linear uh, up to the first dungeon. Um, and, and then that's it, when it opens up. And to your point, you know, yes, it does seem like you can probably break a lot of stuff, but I think that's why they designed it the way they did is because there is not one way to solve any puzzle. There are half a dozen, uh, you know, two dozen uh, ways to solve a puzzle. It's just more about kind of getting to it. Yeah, when you're in at least the first dungeon, you don't really have that many ways to do things, and it's pretty straightforward, um, but I'm fairly certain there will probably be stuff later on that it is a little more... Uh, open-ended yeah. i've also not watched that video i've seen some stuff posted but like brad i've also been kind of avoiding it because i do like to um uh, kind of figure out what i'm doing on my own in these style games it's, it's i find it a little more fun at some point mm -hmm. yeah i'll probably like brad look up one of those videos too i don't know maybe when i'm you know halfway through the game or something to make sure i'm not doing i something really dumb or missing something that's... I really tried to avoid that stuff in Tears of the Kingdom for a long time. And I got mm -hmm. mad. I got mad. I was streaming it once and Jager said, you know, you could just do this. And just like that, it was like instantly it like it's like it's like the first time someone says Santa Claus isn't real. And it's like, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you can't take it back. It just takes a second. And then but you can't ever take that back. Yeah. Is that and something you can say out loud in your home and not be here? worried that it's going to be overheard? Well, my kids are asleep. Nick, you might want to just bleep what Brad just said just to be safe. That's true. So, that's for that's all the younger spoilers, listeners who aren't you know, who aren't necessarily yeah <laughs> who may not be quite up to speed on on Santa Claus. I don't um, think hero mode is the way to play this game. 
because so I'm, I'm I don't want combat to like be dragged out longer. Well, and so this that's is the thing, Brett, is a... this is not like a combat game necessarily. It's not like a Zelda uh, where you're locking onto an enemy and you're dodging and doing backflips and pulling up your shield and all this stuff. No, well, you can kind of do some of that, uh, but that's not like the way this game is designed. So I, I, I feel that it's I don't want to say it's a waste of your time um, to do that. Uh, I, I feel more so this I, I see this more of an exploratory puzzle solvey, you know, game as opposed to like the more combat focus so that's if if all hero mode is doing is just making you take more damage and enemies have more health then you know yeah i feel like less of the energy drops but i i will say that the the sword mode or whatever that you get which was in official promotion before the release of the game so people know about Mm -hmm. it but like it feels like I don't want to just be relying on that all the time, but I, I I was fighting the first boss and I'm like, well, this makes it a lot easier. I could just slash the fucking thing. Well, you, you have to on the first boss. I don't think you do. Or maybe you do. I guess so. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you could try to use, uh, uh, you know, spawned enemies to do it. But to, to your point, Brad, the AI is not the best. And I noticed you, you kind of weren't doing it in the footage. And uh, for those that don't know, I guess, um, when you, when you're spawning, like, uh, uh, a, a moblin or something like that um, to attack an enemy. If you lock on to that enemy, it will immediately make your spawn. Oh, I forgot about the go lock towards... on. They're Z yes. targeting. Oh, that would have made yes. combat so much easier. So there you go. You for, as a reminder, I just forgot there about is... it because when I recorded, I played it yesterday, and then I'm like recording, and I just forgot. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you can lock on to enemies and any spawned uh, creatures will go and st- immediately attack them and stuff like that. So, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. I just got these birds, too. That's going to make the birds way more useful. It's cool that the birds, they're like picking up rupees and shit for me. Uh, there's that some neat cool. shit in here. There's some neat yeah. shit in here. The Legend of I'm Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, that. there's some neat shit in here. Like, that's, yeah. Yeah. you know, I feel like that's really all that was necessary is for some neat shit to be in this game and it seems like yeah you know agreed seems like we're there um cool well we will of course revisit it. it's a delta game we're still pretty early um so i'm sure we will be talking about this again in the, in the not too distant future um for now though i want to revisit a game we talked about last week and i know brad and nolan again have been playing more of it and but it is, of course, I'm referring to UFO 50, which is a collection UFO of... UFO on 50, 50 hours into this game now. Yeah, you, yeah. God damn. UFO 50, which is 50 games in this collection. So I guess y'all's plan was to talk about different well, games? So I actually didn't know Nolan was still playing this. I, I what, recorded what? footage for two different games. and uploaded Oh, you did? It. I don't know if, we have both yeah. of them on here? I, I don't know. I don't know if Chris Davis has my footage, but I have footage. I don't know which games you I have you UFO 2. For. UFO 2 is the one that I recorded for today. I don't even uh, know how to tell which one's which. I used up. UFO 2. There, oh, Nick. Okay. Sad bastard. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see how it starts and then we'll... I guess we'll Okay, yeah, so this play. is mine. This is mine. So so, so the way no, I pitched Brad's. it... This is, the way I pitched it was like, I'm playing so many games and I'm in love with this thing and I'm hopelessly addicted. Maybe like for the next few weeks, I could just talk about a couple of week that I've been playing. This is um, Brad's like game a, of the year. A, a shorter segment. I mean, my games of the year. Yeah, so this is called Minium Max. And let me be quick here. Let, this is called Minium Max. Uh, it's one of my favorites. You see, I'm this little person walking around a room. The, this room is the entire world. This is a Metroidvania that I'm not finished with. I've played for over seven hours. It is a Metroidvania where you can shrink down. You see I, how I was, I stood on that pot, that potted plant, and I shrunk myself down, and all of a sudden I was in the plant, in, and there's oh. like bugs and stuff. So yeah, you yeah. can shrink yourself down. So the cool part about this game is that this Metrovania is entirely in this room, and you, you get lots of quests, and you're getting like abilities, and you're like, hmm, I can go back here and do this thing now, or this one guy wants me to bring him this, I can go over here. But when you bring yourself out, it's like, up to like full size you just like walk one step to the right and shrink yourself down and you've all of a sudden all the way across the world it's such such a clever little idea that's like executed on it it's a complete thought like this is a game that if it was on steam maybe not in 2024 when indie games aren't getting noticed but let's say say like half a half a decade ago right um people would have been talking about this and granted it's a very retro art style but this is such a clever idea 
and and when I started playing, I was like, oh, this is cool. But then I got another ability, and that's you can go even smaller. As I was you saying, it didn't seem like you you yeah you went smaller. So you shrunk down, then you shrunk down again. You can go microscopic. And the crazy part is it is still a seamless world. You can go microscopic and like go and go and go and go. And I'm pretty sure the microscopic stuff, you would think that like maybe some of it's like a uh, proc gen or whatever, but like it is seamless. Like you can just keep going on microscopic level. The world is huge. There's like entire towns that you can find in the world that are like on the microscopic level. It is. And like, this is a, really smart this clever like a, game i play a lot like a of metroidvanias yeah. this wowed me in a way that like the genre this genre has not in a long time because i feel like everything most metroidvanias games are just kind of like souls like you know like hollow knight and i love i love those this is like this is like super it's a cool. really creative use of the genre in the um, abilities you get they're like they're good because it, it's like the stuff you want right where you you eventually get the ability to you can like pick up bugs and stuff and like you eventually eventually get the ability to control bugs and like uh depending on the type of bug you can stand on it and like issue it commands and it'll do the thing that that bug does some bugs bounce some bugs climb some bugs float and then you get the ability to do that with like the bacteria or whatever or like the the really small things and and like things that are like such a like an innocuous enemy early on now that you can suddenly basically fly forever because now you can control the floating bacteria it means you can get to like all the, because you can take something that's microscopic and bring it to the larger size and still have the functionality of that item even into the real world you're still holding on to it and that's what makes it so cool that when you're doing these like kind of fetch questy like your typical like zelda style like quest of like bring me a tea and you know bring me some tea uh, from the honey and add some honey from the honey bee or whatever but like getting there is so like okay i'm gonna jump up on the shelf and i'm there <laughs> and you're gonna shake down this game's fucking cool dude it, it might be my favorite so far of the collection i'm just surprised i'm like and I'm, I'm not done i played it for over seven hours this is just a game this is an indie ass game that is not like a nes style arcade game this is a game that you can go even smaller by the way what uh, is the development process for for like UFO? Ten years 50? and multiple talented indie yeah. devs. Yeah, but like, is are, do they ha are they broke? Like they had because it's a collection of fifty games. So like, do they? So are they? I can tell you because on... I, I have followed the development of the game. Is so Derek, you and friends. Some games are. Um, it's almost kind of game jammy, but everybody's working together on some things. So, some some of the games are like projects that were maybe like almost like a game jam idea from like before that they've now turned into like a fuller idea and sort of like fit it into retrofitted into this collection to make it kind of like adhere to like the color palette limits and, and like the, the lower limits of, of this collection. But some of these were like ideas before UFO 50 was even a thing, but it's just basically this group of devs and friends, like, like the two main developers are Derek, you, you know, creator of Spelunky and like his, uh, homie that he's been working with for a long time. But then, you know, they got a couple of board game designers and you see that in like the strategy games. Right. And there's like really clever stuff there. And like, you know, I talked about party house or whatever, which is basically like a Bellatro like last week, which is super cool. So, but again, I don't want to, I think I'm, I'm about to switch to the other footage because uh, maybe you could scan ahead a little bit, a uh, tiny bit. That's uh, Chris Davis. The other game that I want to feature tonight is Night manner i believe it's called because you know i did stream this last night halloween vibes horror vibes um go ahead chris davis are you no yeah he's it's i'm watching it right now you're oh. muted can you skip ahead a little bit here uh, yeah we're watching that manner oh oh my stream's behind yeah oh sorry uh so yeah night manner this is like a full ass point and uh horror point and click adventure game and why is my stream so behind who knows yeah. uh full on like horror point and click adventure game that I thought was just going to be like combining items, clicking through the things like an old school point and click adventure game. But it, it has like a, uh, as you'll probably see, if you watch the footage, it has like a similar, like I believe a real time, like clock tower. You're being hunted by something in this house mechanic, 
I mean, I crazy. think I just saw a killer, like a crazy oh, killer. Oh, you did. Okay, you did, you did. I get it. I'm yeah. not seeing the footage. Um, I didn't expect that. I thought this was going to be like, a, because people said that like, it's actually kind of like creepy, scary in this retro collection of 50 games. And um, so I was streaming it because, you know, Halloween mood. And, you know, it's got that good adventure game stuff. But like the thing is the vibe, the music, it's retro, but it's like scary. And when I unlocked the flashlight, because I wasn't able to go into the second floor because the second floor was completely dark. So I needed to find a flashlight. I needed to find the batteries and I combined them and I got the flashlight. But then when I actually went upstairs and I was in my little hand cursor that I was moving around, it was actually like a functioning like flashlight. Like a and loop, like I'm moving, light sources? moving like a light source around. Well, a simulated light source around from the flashlight around it. All of a sudden it became like so much creepier because now things are not in view, even though they're in the room with me until I kind of like, I don't know what I'm going to find because I have to slowly move this flashlight around. And I'm like, yo, this is like actually scary. I was not expecting to be scared by a game in UFO 50. You know, when that killer arrives, the cursor starts shaking and it becomes hard to move. You have stuff in your inventory, like a hook that I found that I now combined with like a stick and duct tape to I think solve a puzzle. But like I could click and drag that hook or like I'd found a knife to drag it over the thing that was going to attack me, which in real time to like stun him so I can get away. And this is like an old point and click adventure. To, so to have these real time elements, like right now, or maybe you saw in the footage, I don't know where I am compared to y'all. There's like a hiding mechanic where I'm like holding my breath and it's sort of like a, uh, you know, I got to click in the areas so I don't get spotted, but where I'm in the footage, I'm seeing the flashlight mechanic mm -hmm. and like what I go into a room and it's like, it's creepy because the killer will still pop out in real time while you're like just moving this flashlight around hmm. and it's tense. And you now, have the no, only thing you have I'll no like audio indication of like how close he is or anything like that. Um, so there are things like, like I flushed a toilet in one room and I'm pretty sure that's a way to like bring him to you like right away, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There's, um, I noticed the, cause the, most of the rooms have windows, lightning will flash. And sometimes the silhouette of a killer of the, the killer huh. is outside the window. The window. It, mm -hmm. and, and at first I thought that was just like an atmospheric effect, but to me now what I'm understanding is I think it means that the killer is nearby um and it's like a yeah, kind of like a, the window a mechanic <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean he used to come through the window but it, i'm saying like that might mean like in the next room or so he's gonna pop up so maybe go over to your inventory and have like your knife ready you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's it's clever i wasn't expecting like stuff that feels i don't play a lot of like uh point and click games but to me the the it definitely feels like there's some modern elements here that you wouldn't have found in a, in a, in a, uh, a point and click game from like back then. And that, that's, what's kind of cool about this collection is that there is stuff that feels very old, but there's also stuff that just looks old, but has some like new, cool, unique ideas, not just new ideas, but like legitimately unique ideas. Like has anybody done that type of like Metroidvania where you can just shrink down to multiple levels before, because it seems like, Oh man, how did no one think of this before? That's so smart. It's so smart. It seems so, so to, obvious. To find that kind of stuff in the eight, this collection of 50 full games is something honestly I never expected and it's a great feeling. I've been so addicted to just discovering these kinds of things. And let me tell you, when you start beating some of these games and you get the gold carts, it gets you're like it it, it like like almost like achievement hunting, right? Um, which is not something I normally do, but you see the gold carts fill up your screen as you beat games and they turn red. If you get like the cherry cart, um, like the special like completion or whatever, the more like hundred percent or whatever. And it's like, it becomes kind of addictive, like, like almost like a checklist game, but on a metal level, like I want to like gold cart, all of these, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's cool. This is, this is a stunner in my opinion. And I don't think it's just because I'm old. It might be part of it, but I mean, <laughs> this is the creator of Spelunky and Downwell. I mean, these are talented dudes. They know what they're doing. They really hit on something here. Cool. There's something for everyone. 
You know, I think like somebody like Nick could enjoy a game like this. Even I don't even. Was, I don't feel like I should be. You know by what the statement. fuck I mean, dude? You're a three D boy. You weren't playing. You weren't even playing like two D games. You're like Final Fantasy VI. Why would I play this? Chrono Final Trigger. Fantasy why would VI I play is, this? Final Fantasy VI is trash. I'm just. You're in sixty four. PlayStation that is you know, not true. Early, right? You weren't playing sixteen bit. Really? I mean, all the sixteen bit games that I've played were. Probably after I started recording this podcast. Anyways, I'm done with my two games. So my my two games this week: Night Manor and Mini and Max. And no Mini one's been playing stuff. What's what's? Yeah. Do we have no? Do we have no one's, one's footage? Oh, Chris Davis, you're muted again. I can't. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. Uh, yeah. Uh, which do you want to talk about? Uh, you no surprise me. Video. And I I can't remember if uh, Brad talked about one of these last week. I can't remember. Not possible. I was kind of all over the place last week. Uh, yeah. How about so just just choose? Sure. I don't oh, think Overbold. Brad talked about yeah. this one. No, I didn't talk about. It. Yeah. So uh, Overbold is a very interesting game. Um, I would. I, I don't know the best way to describe it. What's what style of game would you call this, Brad? It's like a kind of like a Robotron hell. style, like, like in terms of retro games, like a twin stick shooter, I guess, in more modern Smash terms. TV. On the surface, Smash TV Smash, is yeah, another yeah, retro Smash TV, but, but like a kind of kind of roguelike to an extent yeah uh, definitely yeah so, so the whole point is is yeah you're in this you know arena uh fighting enemies um and then if you you know win a round you earn some credits to buy better items to move on to the next round uh but the the trick is uh you can actually increase the money you get by increasing the number of enemies and the game kind of lets you push the limits uh, uh, if you want. So you can see uh, on the footage when you're watching it, there's a raised mm -hmm. prize and you can slowly start adding more until you're like, all right, this I might not be able to go higher than this. Uh, but the problem is, is you don't know what enemies you're going to get uh, yeah. whenever you raise the, After the, you the prize. Yeah, you can't go bucks. back. Yeah, so every oh, time you fuck. raise the prize, you get 100 more bucks, but you don't know what enemies are going to now be added to the, the list. And they there's a lot of them. Uh, it feels yeah, it feels like hitting in blackjack, right? It's like it's like you're you're placing your bet, and you're like, "Oh, pumpkins, I can do this. Let's do one more." And you're like, "Oh shit!" Yep. Yep. And then you uh, get an enemy type that's like a disaster or whatever. Yep. Uh, and uh, it, it's one of those things where it's it, there's definitely a bit of RNG to it because you might get some really bad uh, first like you know enemy spawns, and it's tough when you're early on because you don't have a whole lot of upgrades for yourself. Uh, and the very first level, and depending, I, honestly, yeah, no, I, even after the second, because you don't have enough money, uh, you, you one hit and you're dead. Um, and so you, you have to be very cautious the first couple of levels. Um, but then you should have enough money to buy potentially a health upgrade, which is usually one of the first ones I go for uh, to just kind of give myself a little bit of breathing room. Um, and, and then the other thing that kind of makes it a little bit of RNG element to it is between every round, when it's the buy round, uh, you uh, there's always something that's on sale and always something that has a pr price hike. Um, so mm -hmm. you don't know what thing it might be. The thing you were saving up for the next round is actually the price has now been hiked and either a, you can't afford it or B it's like, man, do I, do I spend the extra money to get this thing now? Or do I maybe buy that thing that's on sale uh, instead? Uh, like on this round what I'm watching here is the price hike was uh, health, health packs, which is, I think actually, if I remember, it's the thing I wanted to go for um and health packs is by the the first level of it every 30 seconds a health pack spawns and if you grab it you gain some more health and the second level of it is every 15 seconds um so it's very helpful there are upgrades that it's like oh it lets you take one uh uh blast from like a a projectile weapon or one uh blast from like a uh, explosive weapon uh the upgrades that you know, make you shoot faster that make you do more damage that give more enemy knockback that give your uh minds like you can remote detonate them instead of a timer based so there's so many different little upgrades you can do and you you know, it, it, the the way the path goes is kind of what's on sale, what you can afford. Um, and then to an extent, like what enemies you're up against you know, might you know make a small role in what you choose. Um, it's definitely that like that tension of, you know, it's the gambling, right? That makes this mm -hmm. so like clever. Oh, yeah. it's, be it's because it's like uh, because since all the thing, well, the be money you get, get from your working up towards a boss them making you more powerful. Right. And it's yeah. like, well, I need to. I think I can do it. I need to push myself so I can get stronger for the next subsequent rounds. But if you one tap, you know, one fuck up pretty much, 
means if you well, if you oh yeah are are, are are like betting too much on your own skill like that could be your downfall what what, what i found myself that doing was cool no for sure it is the first round that you can bid on i always bid a bunch on the first couple uh to kind of get yeah, myself set up because like can i said restart. you can restart really quickly the thing is you're going towards there is a boss round um and when that boss round happens there are a shit ton of enemies and there is a boss enemy and so if you play it safe and you're just doing a hundred bucks each round you're not gonna have enough items and uh, upgrades to to make it to that boss round um and so you have to like take that gamble take that chance uh, uh to especially early on to tr try to get your setup uh for success um but this but is I, run based right so every time you yeah. you die you're starting over from, you the, very start from beginning. the very beginning so to go back to what Brad was saying about getting like the gold carts, like what is, how do you get a gold so cart every, in a game like every, this? Every game has a different way to get the gold cart. They're not oh, always so it's not necessarily associated with like finishing the game. Correct. Not well, always. yeah, I mean, but for yeah. a lot of them, it is. A, a lot uh, of them are quote unquote finishing the game, but like finishing differs from like game to game, obviously. Yeah. Um, in terms of like how long it takes, and the cherry cart is usually where it gets a little more specific in terms of uh for the situational, depending on the game type, uh, for cherry carding. I have not cherry carded anything, but that's like really mastering a game. And, mm -hmm. uh, but some people get so like, and start enjoying these games so much that, and they get so hooked on them that they'll go from like gold cart to cherry cart right away. Cause they're just like super absorbed in, into like these yeah. score based arcade games. This one's cool though. I haven't actually played enough of this and I, I, I can't wait to get back. And, and so that's the thing, Brad, is, you know, you're 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 talking uh, you talked about what was the other one you talked about? Mini and whatever. Mini and Max. Yeah. Mini and Max. I've never even fucking seen that one yet like, because yeah, I've not played bottom. all of them. And yeah. I've been uh, I've been I've been I haven't been going in, in, in chronological or, or a numbered order. I've been kind of jumping around, but yeah. I kind of choose one, play it for a little bit, see if I like it. And if I like it, I keep going with it. Now, I did take some of your recommendations from last week and started with those. Um, but then, yeah, I've just been kind of jumping around. And so like that one that you were just talking about, the mini max one, it seems like it's a lot of fucking fun. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. crap, now I want to play that one. Um, but you know, I've gotten not far enough at all, uh, in, in, uh, in overbold. So I want to play more of that. Uh, but man, there are so many, there are so many good games in this, in this Everything bundle. feels so different. That's what, by the so way, oh, many, yeah. many, and, and, and they definitely like, made that their, their, like, you know, their motto or whatever, or their, their design doc or whatever was to have 50 games but have nothing that feels too similar to anything else yeah just cool. just quick note mini and max great fucking title yeah. oh yeah max for is the, the dog which you can summon the dog anytime and like you even get upgrades to the for the dog which i didn't have a dog in my footage for like story reasons but i don't want to get into that <laughs> okay so what it's else cool. are you playing in here nolan uh, so the only other one i have footage of and i can't remember if brad did last week or talked about it. i think he might have talked about it was pilot quest did we talk oh, about that no, I, I don't think I did. But Pilot Quest, yeah, I, I, I talked about it. I don't think I had footage. OK, cool. So, yeah, Maybe so Pilot Quest was the one that Brad had recommend I start because um, there's a bit of a uh, a clicker or a um, idle game. Uh, yeah. What's it? Uh, idle uh, aspect to it. Um, and so when this game starts, you can't really do much of anything because uh, the whole concept is it's very, you know, like, oh, you, a pilot, you've crashed on a on a remote planet and you're trying to fix your ship so you can leave. Um but the interesting, you know, twist with this game is there's no there's not really a concept of health um, or rather the concept of health is all based on time. Um, and so once you collect enough moon shards, which the only way you can collect them early on is by just smashing that crystal that's in the middle of the area over and over and over and over. A which lot. you only do like. Uh, once, well, correct. You, you, have to, you have to do it a lot to kind of get the game going. Um, and yeah. then you can give them to this tree and he'll plant a seed and that seed grows a plant that will start, you know, idly producing crystals for you um, and stuff like that. And then you can once you have enough crystals, you can build a little house and that will invite a person uh, to your area. And once they're living there, if you get enough crystals again, because you do kind of need to smash a lot early on on that crystal, um, you can create a workbench and they'll start crafting um, ingots. Uh, and so it's it, it's this whole thing where it's an exponential growth thing. Uh, but um, like as you can game. see here, when. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is very much like a clicker or an idle game. Uh, when I went into the wilds, um, I had a bunch of meat that was in my inventory. And that meat essentially gets converted into time. In this case, I have 3000 seconds of time uh, to explore the wilds, which You're is a long time. time. Uh, no, dude, I, I keep forgetting to come yeah. back to this because I get absorbed I, I, into other games. 
yeah, I've probably played this one the most. Um, I've been really enjoying this one. Um, but um, uh, early on, you're not going out there with yeah, three hundred, three thousand seconds. You're you're going out there three hundred. Yeah, if even like three hundred. But here's the yeah. thing: it's like I said, there's no concept of health. Every time you're hit, time gets taken away. So whenever you I'm get hit money, by an enemy, okay. yeah. So depending on the enemy, you'll get taken away for ten seconds, thirty seconds, sixty seconds. Some enemies will not get a is a, off of your time. Is the is it game over if you run out of time? So yeah, if and you, you lose everything, if you, you're if you run out of time, you lose everything you gain during that run. Oh, that sounds so stressful. Early on, it is super vital that you're just doing these short trips, these short trips, uh, trying right. to get out there and earn some resources, earn some resources, uh, because then you bring everything back and you can start pumping that back into, um, uh, you know, the guys who are, like I said, building ingots in your base, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, adding more uh, uh, plants that are idly creating you these moon shards. Um, because then you can take, you know, it's once again, like those idle games, like those clicker games, you have to reinvest in yourself. And so it's, when do I spend a little more time not using my resources so I can buy an upgrade to make my resource gathering process faster? This is, uh, so I, can, hmm? I think your world's different than mine. This is a proc gen world. Um, I didn't know that if it is. Yeah, this is not, at first it looked like my map, but it was like, wait a minute, this is not my map at all. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Uh, that's pretty cool if it is uh, like procedurally generated. Um, but yeah, so there's, um, you know, you're gathering all these resources, you're upgrading your little like yo-yo, uh, which is your primary attack. And eventually you get uh, a blaster, uh, which does less damage than the yo-yo, but um, it doesn't have bullets. It uses your uh, moon shards as ammo. So oh. now you're, trying, you're, you're using your resources that you're trying to gather to try to like a, like uh, a Metro game. Your good yes. bullets, or is yeah, your good exactly. money, or whatever. I appreciate the reference. Um, Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So there, there, and then there's dungeons that you go into with bosses, like Zelda style dungeons, uh, with not really puzzles, uh, but there are plenty of enemies, and then always like bosses at the end. And then, like I said, the whole point is you're trying to gather your ship parts so you can rebuild your ship. And then even once you do that, you have to like, like get fuel. You know, it is very Pikmin esque. Uh, as well but yeah so but you can see like, while i'm in the wild i've gathered lots of uh, moon shards and ingots and meat and the nice yeah. thing about gathering that meat is you now have time for your next run you can't ever use that meat on your current run you can similar to like Mega Man, find energy um like pods or whatever they're called uh, energy canisters that will give you a little more time for this current run which is nice uh but for the most part you're trying to essentially gather resources for taking back to your base to upgrade stuff and then to um uh, uh, you know, convert into other units. So you can turn moon shards into moon ingots. You can, uh, you know, uh, a, a hundred moon ingots gets you one science, and then you use science to, uh, with in combination to to upgrade your stuff. So it, it is very much um, one science. Uh, yeah, but so so to Brad's point, if anybody is playing UFO fifty, if you've not started this game, start it now because you want to get that idle process going. Because when you're playing other games. Um, you're still gathering those resources. If you turn Ooh. off UFO 50, you just shut it down. The The resource gathering is like super, super, super minimal. And that's what's so um, clever about it. It's not like this game, like the Zelda aspects of this game are like the most polished or incredible thing or like, you know, there's tons of idle games. But the fact that it's like part of this package and you're being rewarded by playing the other games in the collection, that's yeah. where it's like, oh man, they're working so, on a different so level. So for a while, what I was doing early on, especially because, like I said, early on, your, your resource gathering is so slow in this game, is I would kind of do a bunch of stuff, go play another game for a little while. Once I either got through a level of that or kind of finished that or maybe got over it, I would turn it back off, come back to this to check on my resources. Because early on, a limiting factor is you have your caps, limits yeah. to the, yeah, you have caps to your resources. So you can only have 500 moon shards or something like that. So you do want to go back to it every once in a while uh, so that you can spend those resources and, and re reinvest them. Um, right. It's like a gambling mini game you can do uh, where sometimes you'll get, you know, good resources out of it with the, the Zoldonk, coin, Zoldonk coins or whatever. Um, otherwise, you'll uh, you, or, or you can, you know, just you get an enemy out of the chest and it's like, oh, crap. Now I got nothing. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's so much stuff. Um, also, that, both of the games that Nolan talked about tonight are like basically spiritual successors to other games in the collection. Mm hmm. 
That's the, wild. Which I don't even know if you've played them. Oh. But like, remember when you started Overbold? It was like referencing a character yes. from another game. That game yeah. is like in, is like in the collection or whatever. You know, it's like wow. the opposite of Downwell. Super hard game, but it's that same oh. character. Okay. Yeah. That, and and, and yeah, a couple cool. times you've mentioned this, and for anybody listening at home, like you you've kind of just casually m- mentioned the lore of UFO 50 as a collection. And that's what you're referring to because we said this last week, we didn't really specify this week, but like this, what's really cool about this collection is that like all these games are built within the, within the rule set and the confines, the, the fake confines of like a piece of hardware that doesn't really exist. They've just like Mm -hmm. made everything up and like, they've made this tech that exists in this, in the con like in the world of UFO 50. So all of these games are built with the limitations of that hardware in mind. Um, so like, I want to uh, it's, also, yeah, it's there wild. is secret shit in here that people are trying to figure out. And everyone expected this. Cause if I know Nolan knows, but Spelunky yeah. hides a lot of crazy secret mm-hmm. shit. And people knew that when Derek, E was involved, that this was not going to be a simple, straightforward collection. And I've been screenshotting shit. I was playing, I think it was that horror game. And I came across like a, or some other game. I came across like a, something that looked a little strange. It was like an icon that seemed a little strange. And I screenshotted it because it seemed important. Like, oh, maybe I'll come back to this later. And I forgot about it, but I did save a screenshot. And like a couple of days later, I was playing a completely different game. And I saw that icon again. And I'm like, whoa, I expected to see this again in the game I was playing when I screenshotted it, but I am seeing it. Dude, you in, know what this is? In, where this I is, enter the code in another game. And I'm this like, is giving Whoa. me, I know you're going to roll your eyes, but this is giving me tunic vibes. And I'm. No, no, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, the, for it. I, I can it, definitely it is see that, that sort of larger puzzle. So, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I love sense. that shit. Like, that like honestly is like the thing. Or like, or, or like, uh, yeah. Or like Speed what Monkey was, or whatever. What know? was that like, game? What, what, was, uh, what was that game earlier this year? Uh, Animal Well. Animal Well, yeah. Very Animal Well as well. But uh, but yeah, so I wanted to quickly also just briefly mention, because I don't have any footage of it, but we did talk about it last week, Brad. I played a lot of Party House. Um, mm, uh, yeah. That game is a lot of fun. Uh, and I think Brad, funny, in dude. reality, he only scratched the surface of that game when he talked about it last week, because what he was talking about, I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty good. But then I started playing it. And while I think he did a good job of describing that first level where you're trying to build up your popularity about balance out earning money and stuff like that, when you start getting into those later levels, holy shit, the type of like um, systems you need to uh, uh, like the to complexity, use, the complexity, because it's like you're never going to earn enough resources by just inviting people to your party and then not getting um, too much trouble. Like you have to there are like certain party goers where their ability is kicking everyone out and at first it's like oh why would i want to kick everyone out well it's because there are other people whose abilities is refreshing other people's abilities Mm -hmm. so you'll get stuff where you have like a paparazzi and when you use them they they immediately earn you the popularity and money from certain characters so it's like great now i've done that but then it is so clever right it's because they're taking pictures of people at the party and yeah. I guess they're like uploading them to their social media. That's why you're getting the score during the party as opposed to the, yeah. when the party's over. The writing, I mean, like the car, the character types are fucking hilarious. I think oh, dude, yeah, like, like ingenious the way they turn like a, the idea of like this type of party core into a mechanic and how it makes so much sense. And it's hilarious. Oh, I love it. I love it. Like, 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 like you said, there's like a couple of characters that'll like, basically do a reshuffle right they'll, they'll yeah. take all your cards and put them into your draw pile the and what, what it says is like they'll move all party members outside the grill master does that of course yeah. because he's yeah. the real master and the grill and the burgers are ready and then like the the basketball player basketball. or something mm-hmm. the that because you know he's playing a game and everyone wants to go play hoops with the basketball athlete it, it's yeah. like so clever i love it yeah uh, uh dude, yeah, that that, that that game is, and maybe you, I don't know, maybe you, sh- you just hadn't played enough last week when you talked about it, Brad, which is. Oh, since then I've gold carded it and I'm working <laughs> on the cherry, which is, I believe six in a row without losing or all oh six God. of the scenarios without losing, which Joe. is, which is, oh my God, this game's got y'all hook, line and sinker. Holy shit. Dude, it's, it's good. good. It's a good it's ass good. game. Mm, and, and, are you know, either like playing said, this on steam? Yeah, both yeah. of us are. 
Yeah. Cool. So I, I ended have up buying to... it because Brad kept playing it, so I wanted to play it. Uh, so I ended up so buying the, it. This is the brilliant my, part. My Steam wait hour count is wrong, too, because I was playing in offline mode, <laughs> so I could play the same time as Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like the family sharing. Yeah, that is pretty yeah. fun. Um, cool. You still got to well, yeah. send me that yeah, but... friend, family invite there, Brad. Oh, we Should we talk about that on the podcast? Are you, or, are you saying? Are you saying we have we one more spot in our family? We have one more. Should spot we talk in our about family? it or should we keep it secret? <laughs> keep no, it it's not secret. Oh yeah, we have one more spot in our family. Brad wants people to bid on it. Well, I, it's the. I mean, Chris Davis wants in, and he makes sense. But for years, he's kind of like spurned our library sharing requests, right? Right. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily. We just gonna say let that. him into the family. I feel like maybe he needs to buy a game on Steam that we really want to play, like each of us. <laughs> And then he gets into the family. This is called blackmail. This is it's not blackmail. It's like you know you got to bring something to the table. Uh, this is quid pro quo, is what this you is. See your library <laughs> and decide. Quid pro you know, can I, see my library. It's available I could have to Prince my of friends. The universe. That motherfucker plays everything. What's this? No, I'm just kidding. Also, I, I bought you a game last week, Brad. Like, oh, what are you talking about? Wait, what? What did you, do? What'd you buy? Well, yeah, I it's bought in my him a game now, and sent it to his. What is that? How's that help me? You got a free game? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, yeah, man. It's already in my library. What are you bringing to the table? I guess I could play Alone in the Dark, right? You got, my you got that one Don't take the bait. <laughs> Don't take the bait, Chris Davis. I mean, All I'm right. saying, I'm saying, we tried to share with this man over the years. Yeah. Don't Give take me the bait. all this shit on my birthday. How could you do this to me? It's your birthday? Wait, yeah, today's birthday? my birthday, by the way, yeah. Are you fucking serious? Yes. Oh my god, what is wrong? Hold, Hold on. on. I have not oh my god, my it is! It's October today. 1st! Were you oh keeping that a god. secret? I feel like that's an easy no. birthday to remember, too. Oh my Shame god, it is! Anyway, what is wrong with me? Happy birthday, Chris Did everyone know Thank that? You. Were you waiting for people to remember? Are you one of those guys? Come I was going to bring up my four-player minute, but then you just got after me here's so. what's gonna happen this week's episode is called happy birthday chris davis mm. <laughs> we're gonna let him into our steam family as his birthday gift there we go now you have to do it <laughs> you oh, buy a lot man. of steam games though because motherfucker if i see you buying shit on xbox instead of steam i'm gonna be like hmm i play, I play plenty of stuff on steam i know i'm just kidding well happy birthday chris davis thank you yeah that's not nearly as embarrassing as the time I, I asked Brad what his birthday was on his birthday <laughs> so I could buy him plane tickets to E3. Yeah. And he that just, just wouldn't funny. and he just wouldn't tell me. He was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, Brad, seriously, I need to know your birthday. And then finally he was just like, motherfucker, it's today. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Oh, was, I'll never I'll never live that down. Anyways, <laughs> um, Chris Davis, yeah, you, you you did say you've been spending most of your week playing games that have been out for twenty years. Yes, um, yeah. What would you like to say about that? Uh, Saturday for the anniversary, I played uh, th- uh, through the GOG version of Resident Evil Three Nemesis. Oh, that um, was the anniversary. That's why you did that. Okay, it, it's not like, that's random. Technically, the anniversary was like a week or two ago, but. Resident Evil 3 starts out on September 28th. That's like the first line of the game. Mm, that the is date. true. So like a lot of people just that played was... on that day called the anniversary. And that's what I did. Shout outs okay, to okay. a guy named Ace in the YouTube chat. Like he was with me through the entire stream. I beat the, the game all in once. Uh, and he was providing me hints and details and a lot of help. Wait, you need a lot of help. I mean, isn't that your favorite Resident Evil game? It is. It is. My, my, my thing about the original Resident Evil 3 is that whenever I played it, I never he fought never Nemesis finished. except for like the primary boss fights with him. So like yeah. I was having to like learn how to do the proper Wait, dodging people mechanics. Fight Nemesis outside yeah, of you, the boss fights. When you're fights? being, you can yeah. kill him. Oh, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You can, you can like take him out temporarily. And You've done that stuff. Break. It's yeah. It's been a while. I forgot you could do that. No, yeah, there was, well, Chris Davis. I feel like he's talked about. No, I've I've the, never done that in like the original game. I did it in the remake plenty. Um, but I, mm. I yeah, because no. I didn't understand the 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 reaction and dodge system in the original game, it's not very well explained to you. Like I never engaged in it. So whenever I was Calling fighting Nemesis, I generous. ran away. In recent episodes, we have learned that you had not finished Resident Evil One or Resident Evil Two. You had finished Resident Evil Three, though, right? 
I had finished yep. Resident Evil 2. I, I remember nothing of the game. But we but I think what Brad's getting at is he wants to make sure that you, you have finished Resident you Evil 3. You are a Resident which is Evil your fan, favorite right? Resident Because you game. definitely present as one, damn it. I <laughs> I mean, when Resident Evil 1 came out, I was like 11 at the time. So like it creeped me the fuck out and I stopped playing. Well, sure. Yeah. That's why I didn't but play Silent you, Hill 1. Okay. Though, but, uh, <laughs> a game that was actually scary. Well, wow. What was the other game you, you, you played this past weekend? Uh, well, what I've been playing, uh, and I should beat probably tomorrow, is uh, the uh, Master Collection version of Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, oh. They, oh. Konami released a 4K update for the game. Um, mm. So the textures are considerably better, and they game. did a lot of bug fixing. You couldn't just wait for the remake? I mean, it's fine. I mean, no, well, I, no, I wanted Brad, to like, the have that basis have a of comparison. release date yet, goddammit. Yeah, I, I, mean, I wanted to have that basis of comparison, because, I mean... The last time I played Metal Gear Solid 3 before this was probably but you, 10, 12 years ago when the HD collection was. When's the came last out? time you played uh, vanilla, though? Like, okay, define vanilla. Are we talking like original PS2 release or subsistence, or what are we talking here? Vanilla means 1.0. Yeah, oh, original geez. Snake Eater. Probably when it came yeah. out. Same. Because no one goes back to that version, right? Because why no. would you? Why? Yeah, no. why would you? Yeah, yeah, it's a. I mean, the, the top down camera, it was just it aged like milk by comparison with Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. 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 But the, the cool thing about my playthrough this time around was that uh, I started doing some mods. So I the first mod I did was I removed the piss filter. So the game looks a lot better and prettier, in my opinion. A piss filter. No one's giving you Disagree. serious side eye for calling it a piss filter. Disagree. Give me the piss. That's okay. a quote for that's, the ages. I love that's it. A, that's um, a stance. Uh, also, there was a mod to what, what, incorporate what, what the crouch walk mechanic. Huh? What is the piss filter removal mod called? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. I want to look up some screenshots. I'm curious. Uh, I uh, no green filter or whatever it was called on, on Nexus mods. You'll you'll see it. It's a. Yeah. Uh, it's literally just you 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 tap a green a tint remover. Key. Yeah, there you go. It's it's very light, but I I appreciate it. So, um, the other mod that I really want to do was uh, somebody found a way to insert the code for the uh, crouch walking mechanic from the 3DS release of the game and put it into mm, this. That that is nice. That is so. Nice. I have been using that, and it is man. What a really game useful. that has so many different you versions. You can essentially like... do that in the new one, right? Yeah. 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 Is there even a benefit to that, though, with the way that's designed? Well, I mean, uh, in, yeah, when you're crouching, it, you you move a little bit faster than when you're crawling, your obviously. But more importantly, you yeah, keep the, your oh, okay. higher camo index. Yeah. Uh, OK. Also, yeah. I prefer the piss filter. I'm not OK. Lie. To each their own. Well, no one is, the artistry, no one right? is you know? pro piss. Yeah. I mean, some people believe me, one of them, that like Shadow of the Colossus had a certain look to it that kind of went away with the remake and I miss it. You know, the what's well, it's that whole thing that's been making the stuff. rounds lately that someone's like, Oh, I redid whiplash, but I removed the yellow filth like tinting. And it's like, yeah, but you also removed all of like the aesthetic and the feel yeah. and like it, it, yeah. it looks bland now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 To each their yeah. own. Yeah. So I, so I just, so you're, be... you're going to finish that up. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm in like the forest right before you fight the boss at the end of the game. So mm. I will finish it. Which ready, for that. ready for that sick ass boss fight against uh, boss. Yeah, well, the I, boss, um, the boss. Excuse me. Sorry. All right. I sorry. Yeah, I looked the at boss. the 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 boss. You know, there was one thing that they did going from vanilla Snake Eater to subsistence and the HD editions that I completely disagree with. When you hmm. killed the boss at the end of the game, the entire field of flowers changed color. Mm -hmm. They're only mm -hmm. a set color in the versions after Snake Eater. So you miss oh. that. You, you miss that visual mechanic. I, I really thought that was kind of a beautiful moment there. A visual was a not a mechanic, but a moment. Of, right. Yeah, was it, it was it was a real time effect that happens. OK. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. But Those it, are both it, great games. Yeah, it's it's good so. to have that frame of reference for what to expect from 
uh, Delta Snake Eater. Because I'm, I'm really hot on that game right now. I am so excited for it. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. I was really surprised we made it through TGS without a re- release date. I'm not, I wasn't necessarily 100% convinced it was coming out this year, but I thought we'd at least get the date or, like, yeah. the window. Nothing. Um, so, yeah, in, in fact, there was a, a statement from the producer earlier today that said that um, they don't want to reveal the release date because they don't want to box themselves in. I mean, that makes sense. It's yeah. just the way they've been talking about it and the way, like, you could pre-order the collector's edition so like like months ago or something. It's just like people were just kind of expecting it by the end of the year, I think yeah. because of those, those moves. But, uh, logically I mean, it makes that sense. does make sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to do a quick update on fancy critic. We haven't been putting, giving a lot of time to fancy critic the past few weeks. There's a delay or there's been a lot of delays, delays actually some developments and pickups. Um, I don't know, Brad, do you happen to have that up in front of you or should I pull uh, that? Well, so the delays were Deco Police and Assassin's Creed. Did we talk about those last week? I am fucked. Well, uh, I, mean, could, I don't yeah. think we did. I mean, uh, we have to replace them. That's the problem. A lot of people need games. I have uh, one of mine got delayed I had, as well. I have it's three dollars but... and three spaces left on my roster. I well, lost Deco Police. Bucks. You just make sure you draft games that are coming out this year. God forbid yeah. Stalker gets delayed, then I'm truly fucked. I'm gonna have really a short. I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'd be fucked. Um, uh, but like, I was, I'm gonna be honest. Deca Police, Deca Police, oh, and Assassin's Creed Shadows are like two of the games that I was kind of like banking on to pull in the most amount of points for me. Deca Police and was so... the shocker to me. Like delaying that to 2026. That's, yeah, that's the weird. crazy. Like they've level been saying, place right now. level five has been saying Deca Police was coming by the end of the year for a long time. Yeah, and I was starting to get, famous. I was starting to get very suspicious, but I figured TGS would have answers, and sure enough, it did. But the answer was, it's coming out in 2026. It's skipping a whole fucking year. Yeah, which that is, is insane. It's insane. So I, I'm fucked there. Assassin's Creed Shadows got delayed. I think, which is kind of in response to. Some of the controversy. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't put that narrative out there because I don't think that's true. Don't, I'm, let's okay, not give I'm them just, power. I, I don't think any of that bullshit has anything to do with it. I think All it's right, just fine. That's it's fair. a busy year and games are hard to make. Fucking I mean, I, to delay shit all the time. Outside of Fantasy Critic, I think that's fine because um, you know it was coming out so close to. Yeah, I mean, uh, like it was coming out days before. Reasons are good, right? It was I mean, coming out days before, before Stalker and. Quite honestly, like, I mean, as much as I'm excited for Assassin's Creed Shadows, Stalker kind of has my heart right now. Um, so that's great. But Fanster Critic wise, it's coming out in February now, so I lost it. And then I bid on three games, a dollar each, and I was, and they were all random indie shit. I was like, most people probably don't even know what these are. Were you throwing darts at a dartboard? I mean, no, I so was doing me... research, you bitch. You always tell me to do research. I'm kidding, I do the I'm research. Kidding. The only one that I thought was dicey is that horror game, which is the one you ended which up with. Which is the one I fucking won, goddamn. It's the one <laughs> because I, had because I was doing finish. research, and I'm like, what is... I mean, this this could be anything. I mean, I guess it looks kind of cool, but... Post-trauma. On that one, I'd be that. worried about, like, are people even going to review this? Do you? Let me ask you this. Do you still have a free drop? Your free drop? Or did you use that on something? Uh, Let me double check. I think I do. I think I do, but like the free drop is only valid if it gets delayed, right? No, no, no. The free, the 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 unconditional drop, the one that lets you drop something on your roster, even without the delay announcement. We each get one. Uh, I have. I, not, I think most of us I have not used ours. my unconditional. Yeah. So no one has used theirs according to my. When does that question. horror game come out? Uh, th- it, this month. Now that's. Oh, October. you can't drop it because you have. Three slots and three dollars. Yeah, I, I literally have to fill now two more spots and I have two dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so and worried it, about getting in that situation, which is why I, I sold Dragon Age because I didn't want to be in that situation when shit got delayed. And sure enough, I would have been because, well, I don't know about Silk Song and the altars. I was I was sweating the altars thinking that might get delayed. Yeah. And sure enough, it did. I think they were waiting till after the launch of frostpunk to ultimately make that decision and it makes sense kind of uh, probably yeah, all hands on deck on frostpunk to, right now. uh to slade and chat who's saying he thinks i used it on the count ca- the cat ca- the counter pick that i draw i did drop a counter pick but that was my no that's a, that, that's a super drop i'm talking about the one the, unconditional yeah. drop that we all get right 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 um so yeah that happened so 
we'll see what happens. Now I, now I got to figure out how to replace the altars. The altars and there's a lot of people yeah. with a lot of money. I'm also don't have much money. So every, I think we're all just going to be kind of bidding on random shit, hoping that it comes out soon. Um, which, you know, there's stuff, stuff is coming out. Well, yeah, of you know, course. In fact, I'd argue, and I don't want to say them. There's, there's larger games that are coming yeah. that have still not been bid on. Um, true. I expect to see them in the upcoming weeks, but I mean, games, look, big publishers. Yeah, there is one game that's huge, probably one of the biggest games of the year that I gave serious consideration to. And then I started looking, doing looking back over the history of that series over the previous years and was like, I know I which one you're talking that, about, but I think I don't people are more excited about this one than yeah. the one. Well, no, I, I don't disagree, but I was also like, but like I talked myself out of it pretty quick. I know I know things are last year was we're the alluding to Call of Duty series has ever scored. If we're thinking we're alluding to Call of Duty, Duty. Yeah. and if you if if you look back over the Call of Duties over the past five years, the highest thing I think the highest one I found was like a seventy eight, maybe maybe um, seventy eight. Um, last year was the one that was tragically bad. Call of Duty yeah. has not been like a guaranteed banger as far as critical reviews in a long time. But this is what is this? Blobs this looks here? great. This is the Blobs here too, but like Blobs has the last few Blobs haven't have kind of flopped. No, they haven't. As blop, blop. Cold War You're was right. fine, There's... and that's the best description I could possibly give for it. Yeah. Um. So I, I just like I kind of talked myself out of that. You got to uh, talk to you got to pop into the the shooter channel and. Find out if it's worth it. I'm. I'd be too scared to bid on that. So yeah. I. It, you know, that series has also been quite high. So real quick, just kind of the last few. Um, so Europa was picked up. That was one of the other games I bid on. Europa was picked up Looks by cool. who? Who got? Who ended up getting that? I'm looking at the history here. And I think it was. Uh, uh, who's accidental on top of the sheets, fully clothed midday Chris, naps? Lego Horizon was one that was like a crazy scoop because is that Carlos. I think it was crispy. Oh yeah, uh, I guess it is crispy. Lego Horizon was one that Ed bid bid thirteen and Nolan bid fourteen, which is good yeah. because which is cool because it's like you know that was the one where it's like I'll do ten dollars, but he's gonna do eleven. Let's do twelve. Yeah, but he'll do dude, twelve. I'm was. gonna do thirteen. And Nolan did one final, but I bet uh, he's yeah. thinking I'm gonna do that, and he's thinking I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do fourteen, and for it to actually come down to one dollar difference is actually kind of it's fun. pretty. It's pretty funny. It's probably cursing this motherfucker. That was a, yeah. that was a good that was actually a good pickup. I mean, it makes yeah, me I feel think, a little better that, that I didn't even have the funds fun. to even compete with that one. So I didn't even that bother. Pretty sad. Um, like I, I don't see that being like. Bad. The random one that I can't believe I just kind of stumbled across this game. I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. It was does look cool. I watched this I, the first time. Last time I saw you, and I was like, this, mm. this feels like a game I can bid on, and no one's going to know what it is, and I can probably get away with it. Nope. Who the fuck got that? Uh, no one. That's the problem. There was no 13 spots to fill or whatever, so everybody's looking at everything. So it yeah. doesn't matter what you introduce, everybody's going to be peeping these fucking trailers That's going. The problem, this does yeah. look pretty good. That's public bidding, but I'm telling yep. you, y'all don't want to do private bidding. I don't want to do private bidding. I like the. But I, I mean, I like. I've decided. I don't know if I shared it like officially on the podcast, but if I end up winning two years in a row, I will completely step away. You can make all of the league choices set up for next year, and I will with zero input for me. I don't want anybody to think. Now, I don't want y'all like handicapping me. That's kind of brutal. But I'm saying like I don't want to be thinking that I'm setting the settings in such a way that benefits me so i will let i will let y'all set it up with i don't think anybody here realistically myself. thinks that of you Brad. no i know i know but i still think it's fun to let y'all to like completely remove myself from those negotiations i know me and you have definitely disagreed about allowing certain things like remakes and shit so i will recuse myself from those discussions fair enough fair. But i am already okay. kind of thinking about next year a little bit i mean I mean, I am Monster too. Hunter, now that I've, that, now that I know I've Monster lost. Hunter's like one or two pick, right? Sure. Well, yeah, of course. That'll be probably one of the first things to go. Okay. Um, with the, all right, with that, let's go ahead and wrap up with the four player man. I know we're going a little bit uh, long in terms. Of, I just did one segment tonight, so let's just yeah. roll right into it. Let's wrap it up. Uh, four oh. player minute, Brad. Nolan, what's your final thought for the week. Oh, what the fuck, Nolan? You're you're going uh, first. Uh, sure. No. Yeah, I can. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously per usual in, uh, all eternity, my, my sweat is just games. 
there's too many. I, I have not finished Astro Bot. Uh, I'm playing all this UFO 50. I started Zelda. I'm still playing some Pokemon on the back. Uh, and so, you know, there's there's just too much going on. On top of all of that, uh, I'm trying to do nursery related stuff. Uh, we're trying to pick out paint colors. Um, paint colors look so much different on swatches in the store than they look on your wall in your house. Oh, nice. The wallpaper sample, though, look really good. Motherfucker. And the, the the wallpaper does look good, and and I have it temporarily hanging on the wall with just some like uh, paper clips, not paper clips, uh, whatever those like push pins. binder clip things are. No, oh. not well, yeah, the push pin, but I didn't even do a push pin into the wallpaper. But anyway, uh, because I'm trying to put up, you know, big, you know, I'm doing like kind of three by three um, samples of paint uh, all over the wall uh, in different shades. Um, trying to figure out one that looks good and it's like, okay, well, it looks good now, but hold on. The sun's not up. Let's see what it looks like when the sun's up. Cause that's going to change things. And the other problem is, is I didn't think about it when you're going to paint different, uh, uh, you know, uh, test colors. I, you got to wash out your paintbrush between, between each one because you don't want it like, like tainting the samples. And so it's like, Oh my God. Like, and I, I think I've done one, two, three. Four, that's why you just buy like five, 18 paintbrushes, right? Dude, in <laughs> retrospect, I should have bought like a bunch of cheap paintbrushes. Uh, I have like, I think you have like eight or nine different samples up in the room, like on different spots on the walls, trying to figure out the best color. Um, and so it's just like, man, uh, just like one thing after another. And then I've been doing all this yard work recently because I'm trying to get my yard nicer. Cause I'm like, man, we got a kid on the way and I want them to be able to play in the yard. But it's not like I can just start that when they're ready because then the yard is not going to be in. So I'm just like, oh my, that's just like one thing after another right now. Pretty uh, much endless. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then cool. you're just doing research on car seats and strollers and cribs and trying to figure out all the best stuff to, and I and don't get me wrong. I'm definitely not trying to buy the most expensive stuff for my kid or anything like that. It's more about like, I'm just trying to make sure I'm making a decision. I'm not going to regret, put it that way. No, and no, doesn't need yeah. a seven thousand It's unlimited. You, pretty much everything you can buy can go up into Chris Davis territories of mattress. <laughs> and, and that's uh, what I have found. Uh, and I have found that there are certain cribs that I'm like, I didn't know how much I thought a crib was. Um, but then there are it certain wasn't ones this. that, uh, yeah, it's like, man, like, and it's like, oh, but this one also, you can, you know, change its uh, orientation or whatever. So it grows with them. So I'm like, maybe it is yeah. worth a little more yeah, money because then I want to buy something we else in the future. Modifying it to becomes a regular bed. You know, yeah. There's a there's a heavy baby tax on everything you buy because they know that people yeah, for will, sure. I got to buy the best for my baby. Yep. You know, it's but it, there are certain gouge. things, especially when it comes to like clothes and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to spend a lot of money on baby clothes because they grow out of them so fucking quick. And so and actually, you get this gifted past, clothes a lot. Well, you do get gifted. But actually, this past week, there was an event in town and I forget what it's called. Oh, um, Just Between Friends. Uh, was what it's called and essentially think of it like kind of like maybe almost like a goodwill but mainly for kid based stuff and so it's like essentially people donate stuff to it and then they sell it but they kind of do it like it's like a a mobile thing so they have small pop-up shops Mm -hmm. and so in this case they did it in like a local fire department um or they popped it up and so we went and we bought actually ended up buying a bunch of like um uh, smaller clothes and and stuff like that because it's like oh this thing's cute and it's like three dollars and i'm like yeah i know my baby's gonna grow out of this in like a few months uh so i don't mind spending a few bucks on that versus you know yeah i don't know so anyway there's there's a lot of stuff baby proofing um is laid in chat is asking no not yet because the baby's hopefully not going to be doing anything yeah Uh, that's the thing baby proofing doesn't actually need to come with when the baby pops up but i got a little bit of time before i need to do that and similarly it's the same thing with the nursery i don't need the nursery ready day one the baby's not going to be sleeping in the nursery it's going to be in our room yeah Uh, but i think it's more like a symbolic thing that you know when it's a nesting baby home yeah it's yeah a nesting thing and also you know bernadette can't really do anything in that room until i've done all of that um so yeah that's hopefully um we think we've decided on a paint color um and then uh hopefully uh this week I'm gonna go buy that and then potentially be painting the nursery all weekend so it's like one of those things where it's like it's just eating how, my how's gaming your, time right now mm-hmm. let me ask how's your how are your dogs are y'all are, are, how are how is where you live right oh, now or do they are they pretty are barky they are they pretty barky uh, they love gloves um yeah they they love eating gloves and then me having to take them to the no. vet and pay a bunch i mean of like are they hearing the gloves shit up and barking um, at shit 
so no, they do not bark at random shit uh, just when someone walks past or anything like that. Um, but yeah, they do bark um, a lot at like dinner time or uh, certain times of the day. They will like bark a decent amount, um, you know, for whatever reason. But they're also like they're they're huskies, so they're not like they're, it's not like that that shrill barking. It's more like yeah. like woos. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but Kate, Kate will woos. be pretty loud. Um, but yeah. we're hoping that the baby hearing all of this while in utero uh, is getting her used to the barking sounds. Uh, and the other thing that I have heard in the countless hours of research I've been doing online that's eating into my gaming time, too, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you bring your baby home from the hospital, do not have a quiet house. Do not try to be silent. Do not try to, like, you know, make it like run the vacuum, make lots of noise, do lots of things because you want your baby to get the used bar. to that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. So hopefully, uh, hopefully she uh, gets used to the dogs uh, barking. Like I said, the main times they do it are like kind of dinnerish times, uh, maybe when we're like right about to go outside and they're getting excited. Or unfortunately, we started a bedtime routine with them uh, where uh, to convince them to go upstairs at bedtime, I started giving them some little dental sticks, which I guess is also good for their health. That's what, that's what we do for for Evie. And she is she is the most attentive bedtime dog and almost almost on the dot nine o'clock she's like it is bedtime she goes she's get, trying to get our attention she wants to go outside and when she comes back in she goes straight to her crate and she looks at us like okay give me a dental treat yeah. and we give her we give her a greenie every night before bed so i'm yeah. i hear you unfortunately uh, my dogs aren't single aren't that greenie. uh well they come in different sizes yeah uh, you can get small ones and you can get huge yeah it's ones. like it's like this long yeah okay. that honestly i don't even give my dogs the large dog greenies because they're so fucking big uh they're like huge i give them the medium-sized dog ones um but uh but yeah unfortunately kato is not that uh direct and subtle and he he just yells and in and he's like give me the fucking treat give me the fucking treat uh as soon as it's like that time so hopefully the baby gets used to that when she shows up okay you just what's, make sure I know you, we've had this conversation. Make, what's the sure what's the due you, um, month or the 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 month again? So the due date month, whatever. Sure. She, she's yeah, due you, on Cyber Monday. Oh, oh shit. December second. <laughs> Damn. Make sure, make sure you give uh, lots of special time for your dogs because with our dogs they became sort of like the tar- you know when you're so tired and frustrated and and they start barking you just be like fuck you you're the reason all this sucks you woke up the baby you know they don't know what's going on but they do become no, kind sure. of a kind of a target and when when both of our dogs died it was like oh shit are we going to start taking it out on henry <laughs> you know, when we get all frustrated yeah no but you gonna you gonna bring a blanket home from the hospital early to get yeah, them used no, to the, smell and all that? Yeah, that's that's the plan. Yeah, um, is to bring like a blanket or a hat or something like that. Yeah, just to get them used to it. And I, I don't think Cato knows because he's a uh, he ain't got much going on upstairs. Uh, but uh, Butters, I think, definitely can tell that something's going on. Uh, one of the very big signs is he's been following Bernadette more so than he mm, used to. Yeah, it seems. And then yeah. the other thing is he hates the shower. Like he does not like the shower at all. But now every time she showers, he's right outside the shower. Um, mm. And so uh-huh. that's like very odd for him to do. He's good. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Kato's a high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, okay, okay, what, okay, still Kato's one of my just... one of my favorite uh, podcast. Not even a podcast. Four player memories. It's when Hyde ate Chris Davis's Chipotle burrito. <laughs> Chris Davis's reaction to that was, "I will die in." <laughs> It was so funny. I was upset with your dog. <laughs> oh, oh, he ate the whole fucking burrito. <laughs> and you just came back. And yeah, how, did, how did you. you not like, how was that not bad for you at the end of the night? I mean, it was bad for him. He was probably throwing up the rest of that night. But I'm saying like, it was funny because like you just stepped out and you ate a whole fucking burrito, man. That's like, <laughs> Dude, that was like half his size, too. Oh, um, like, my. Wait, wait a second. The, it was it was Chipotle burrito. It was a Chipotle so, burrito, maybe Freebirds. How did, so how did he get burrito, it out of the? Though. He didn't eat the aluminum, like the the no, foil. He was like he had like started eating it. It was just sitting on the desk in the other room. Classic wow. mistake. My God. Okay. Uh, 
Brad, are you ready for your four, final thoughts? Oh, no, actually. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> too invested in listening to theirs. Chris Davis, go. <gasps> Fucking okay. All right. Um, well, house update because fuck all of oh you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, too, am looking at paint <gasps> and uh, how to decorate my office. Got samples. Chris Davis just held a dark paint blue. <laughs> yeah. Are you going with that dark of a blue? Uh, uh, not the... I, I I'm more going uh, for this one. I like this color. Okay. It it doesn't come through well on a webcam. So I will say this: what I, I learned the same about thing, it, it, they don't come well on photos either. Trying to take a photo to show someone, like, yeah, yeah no, true. The, 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 just realize, so different. just realize, when you put a paint color on a wall, once it's like covering the entire wall, it like intensifies the color. Go lighter like than tenfold. Yeah, go lighter than you probably think you want. Because if you start dark and you put it on the wall, you're gonna be like, "Holy shit, this is oppressive. <laughs> this no, is this, an oppressive blue." This is actually the lightest of the blues I was looking at. So, um, right. and I'm not gonna necessarily start it's, with it's, my entire office. I'm just gonna do my my accent wall. Um, and go for that for okay. now. So oh, I think starting with an wall. accent wall okay. might give you a good yeah, idea yeah. too. Yeah, man, we're so we're old. We're talking about baby stuff and mm -hmm. painting walls what is happening yeah. guys my uh my drywall I mean, should know. be starting some people do this, this when they're like 22 so i know <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm that's just true. uh that's true i my my dinners for the week are oh, cereal goodness. and then peanut butter sandwiches I'm yeah stressing. that mattress really got you hard huh <laughs> And yeah. Peglin, don't forget Peglin. And Peglin, <laughs> Peglin really, breach wizard. Peglin really sent you over the over the edge. That six dollar difference could change your life. You it know? could uh, absolutely. Uh, honestly, not the most efficient dinners, like price for like what you get. I mean, you really need to be looking into like fried rice uh, mm -hmm. is a really good one that gives you a lot of like food for the for the money versus like peanut butter and jelly. I I have a lot of rice. I bought like a 20 pound bag like earlier this year. Okay. Uh, my problem is that I have and, like a. And it lasts you more than a week? I, I've still got like, I've still got probably like 17 pounds of it to go through. But my problem is that I, I don't have an, me. I don't have a walk and I'm on an electric range. So it's like, I can only do so much. For fried rice. Y'all are what is the cost benefit analysis on like when you're weighing like hmm, months of PB and J versus six thousand dollar mattress? Like, <laughs> where is the quality of life here mattering most to me? Well, it's, it's more like I'm not spending twenty dollars a meal. I'm spending maybe a dollar, dollar fifty on a meal. And you're right. It dollar, adds up, but I mean, meal, like, but six thousand dollars a mattress. I eat basically the same lunch every day, and it's not because I'm like weird about food. But it's a it's a cup of ramen from the store because I'm tired of thinking about what I'm going to bring for guys, lunch. And I found one that was pretty good. I'm going to yeah. be honest. Y'all are fucking killing me. Brad, you better have something that's not domestic in your fucking four player minute. What are you talking I about? I talked about games. You, you did. You did. To be fair, you did. That was not the bulk of it, though. That's true. That's true. But that's the bulk of uh, my life at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I totally get it. But Brad has no excuse. Sh Shutaro Ida. You might not be too familiar with the name. He's the director of Bloodstained 2. He stepped down, diagnosed with mm. cancer. Oh. And they're kind of refiguring out. Wait, they're how making to proceed. Bloodstained 2? Yeah, Bloodstained 2 is in development. Wow, it's, I didn't it's even realize bad. that. Yeah, so that's sad news. I don't know if it's my four-player minute, but I'm just kind of scrolling through these topics. And, you know, shout out to him, fuck cancer, and, yeah. uh, you know, hopefully they Yep, that's going. pretty universal. It, it, it is, you know, what's, uh, you know, the Suikoden creator earlier this year passed away before the release of Ayudin Chronicle. And it's like, man, mm, what is right, it about yeah. my favorite franchises coming back that were former Konami-developed games and now their creators are passing away this is horrible anyways um yeah no my four player minute is about you know one player now uh, let, let me end with one more analogy before i get booted from this call to me and because i have been focusing on 
basically the number, right? And I want to be clear here. For, for, remember, the people who are listening to this podcast yeah. at home have no fucking clue what you're talking about. It was about, about an uh, indie game that was, you know, basically one person was playing. We were talking a lot about it before the podcast, and I was like, it, I was really harping on, harping on the fact that, like, this is not normal failure. Like, one person playing the game is maybe no one, right? It was just, it seemed so low to me. It scared me. And it, it, to me, it feels like the gulf between, like, streaming to no one and streaming to like 50 people 30 people right like it might not seem like a big difference but in my eyes that goal there's a gulf there and it's all the difference right like streaming to no one is like soul crushing right it's like why are we even why do i even bother at least when you're streaming to 30 fucking people you know people are showing up right you know, maybe you're not making a, a living doing it, but at least someone is there to appreciate your passion, your artistry. When you feel like it's no one, it's like, why Why are we even in this business? And it, it's sad. And I want to end on a sad note, but I have been thinking a lot about that. Um, and that sort of streaming analogy just sort of popped into my head because I don't think anybody could keep it up knowing that no one was watching their shit. It sucks, man. Right. Um, also, on a positive note, shout out to because um, I did just say two sad things. Shout out to uh, Silent Hill Two, man. I feel like I feel like this remake. I'm happy for you, Nick. I think this one's coming together. Um, and I played a lot of Silent Hill games, but I'm famously like, like maybe not as big of a fan, right? As like true diehard Silent Hill fans, I played a lot of them during the my horror streaming days when people just wanted me to play horror games. That was like the first time I played most of those Silent Hill games. And, you know, I had a good time and I'm seeing this one and I'm like, maybe I'm still not a Silent Hill girly like Nick. Right. But like it's fucking October, man, the, at least the timings, right. I'm ready. I want to play the a timing, horror game and this one looks pretty right. good. So like there's a lot of baggage with the series, but I feel like it's a it's a lot of baggage that the fans bring to it themselves. Like there's a lot of like infighting amongst fans and you hate to see that in a struggling series. But as like I view myself as kind of a Silent Hill outsider and I'm just seeing like a it was a pretty like decently budget horror. I mean, so many of our horror games are like fucking indie games and shit. Like that fucking one I was This was some this is a project earlier. This is a project of all the things you could do in the Silent Hill franchise. This is like the one thing that you wouldn't you just wouldn't want to fuck up. Like, I don't know how much faith I have in the other projects like Silent Hill F or Silent Hill Townfall. I hope those come together. But like, even if this is a huge success, I still don't know how I feel about those other projects. But it's nice to know that like a re a loving remake of this game in particular, which is one of my top five games of all time. It's a goat horror game. Seems it to be was, coming it, together. Of all the Silent Hill games I played, I didn't play Downpour. It, um, it, it, it was I, my favorite. I, I love you guys. Can I bow out? Yeah. I yeah we're take care of something. Okay, I know mm-hmm. we're wrapping up, so I just wanted to not feel bad. Yeah. Love you guys. Podcast, you, fun times. Yeah, you're good. Appreciate it. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye, guys. Oh, bye. Not, no, we're not. I said bye, guys. Like, I'm leaving, but it's really just by Nolan. Anyways. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I totally, uh, I hear you. I hear you, Brad. Um, and my final thought for the night, um, since you took care of Silent Hill for me, I, I'll mention, because no one's mentioned it yet, but we got our first trailer for um, the second season of The Last of Us on HBO. I haven't watched um, it yet. I didn't watch it. And, oh, you haven't watched it yet. No. Trailer's pretty fantastic. And oh. it's also... Every shot, every shot in the trailer, with the exception of one thing that is obviously a completely original thing that wasn't in the game, is like going, I was just going, oh shit, oh my god, holy fuck. And then it's just because it's all these moments that, you know, obviously people who haven't played the game doesn't really mean much. It just looks like, oh, it looks like more of the last was great. But like every moment I was like, oh my god, they're doing that. Oh fuck, they're doing that. Holy fuck, they're they're doing doing all of this. I mean, I golf, right? I mean, all right, all right. Say no more. I'll watch that. Just it's a good trailer. And um, I I have a pretty I think I have a pretty good grab grasp on like what I think they're going to cover in the course of this (laughs) second season. Um, But the trailer gives you like a first glimpse, like Abby and uh, the 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 Seraphites, the scars. Um, 
and just yeah man and moments like really big important moments for ellie and joel from the game you get a glimpse of in this trailer and i was just like fuck man i I love i love that that show came together so beautifully i'm kind of so i really enjoyed the last of us one and two both those games Mm -hmm. a lot um i'm more of like i feel like in terms of the games one is a lot I, I like the maybe the first one more than the second one as a video game. That's fine. But I will say like translating like those stories to like television, like I feel like the story of the first one is a lot more like standard zombie fiction story. Yeah, I and, think it's a lot more. And I think I'm more interested in seeing how they adapt the second game because oh, yeah. that go there's like big much bigger swings. Yeah. No Much bigger intended. swings. <laughs> like I and feel like they need to that, sp- they need to spend at least four or five episodes before they get to the, the big moment. Dude, I'm pretty sure the this season finale am, we're talking. I am moment. pretty sure the season finale of sec- second yeah, season yeah, yeah, is yeah. that moment. Yeah. Um, because first of all, one thing we do know already is that the second season of the show is, is only seven episodes. Okay. Um, so they're doing a, it's prestige doing a shorter television season. It's just short seasons um, man, it. but they've already said they've they've kind of like mapped it out for at least two seasons for the second game maybe even three so and that if you've played the second game that makes total sense and oh, adapt fuck. oh i don't what? know what four player minute should have been it was something we didn't cover in fantasy it came up fantasy game it's not fantasy critic related okay i mean they're just, not racist i'm pretty much, I'm pretty list. much done. they're not racist that. list nick let's end on that with Deca Police being delayed, that was one like shoe in of like getting the rest of your points. You were like, "Oh, I'm just gonna play." I mean, Deca I also Police. was gonna. I was also really interested in Metaphor. I downloaded the demo. So I, I, I download. I started the demo. I didn't want to talk about it because I never finished it. Uh, also, I traumatized Henry. He saw something he probably shouldn't have seen. I warned him it was a grown up game. Whatever. Um. Anyways, it's pretty like fancy. It's pretty fancy. I, it's not like a, it is fantasy world. And I know some people are like. Oh, I like schools and stuff. I don't know what the fuck they're saying, but like <laughs> I, I vibe with, I vibe yeah. with like well, you know the the modern Japan setting. Right, people right, right, really right. vibe with with when it comes to Persona. This is like a more like tr- typical like fantasy world, kind of like fantasy anime, fantasy mm-hmm. medieval fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like man, it's well presented. Still not fully voice acted, which seems crazy to me. Yeah, I saw like, your message about that. Union Chronicle can be fully voice acted, but whatever, whatever. It seems cool. That's probably the thing I'll, I'll spend a lot of time because that save carries over. I'll probably, yeah. and I hear it's Now that kind Deca of Police mean, isn't coming out, I kind of have to play Metaphor if I want to get my not racist card. So, uh, you kind of, but I hear it's, everyone's saying it's like Persona long. Yeah, and I mean, like, I like, like maybe Persona Five. Long, I mean, let's, not let's be clear long. though. I thought I didn't think Deca Police was. How many be a points is that, either. by the way? Do we know I, where you're at? You, Persona. I, you did Persona, we'll have, Dragon's Dogma, and Rebirth, right? We'll have this conversation. I mean, I haven't finished Rebirth yet. We'll have this conversation yeah. off you the will. feed. Yeah, we'll have it off. The um, feed. Did y'all? Bye. We gotta go. Did yeah, this is it. The, this uh, is the show, guys. Uh, did y'all see the what? Yokotaro promotional video for Metaphor? no oh wait no yeah i that watched was, it that was cute that was really good yeah, uh you know make another fucking near game stop being cute damn it i, I think he's <laughs> just waiting for square enix to give him the green light and give him the money oh these uh, guys have been working on it so to answer your question brad i have six points right now between persona 3 and dragon so metaphor Dog will 2. get you there one point for for rebirth, which I'm closing in on. Of course. And metaphor, I, I don't know how many points you said metaphor was going to give me three. Four points. Three points. Four maybe. points. Oh yeah, metaphor will take me across the finish line. But you got to finish metaphor. I got to finish metaphor. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Anyways, that's guys. Thanks for listening. Um, <laughs> uh, fourplayernetwork.com. You can find all of our episodes there. You can watch us stream these podcasts every single night. Or sorry, not every single, every single Tuesday night over at twitch.tv slash four-player podcast. We'd love to hang out and just talk about video games, catch up on what's going on in the industry. We hope you'll join us. But most importantly, if you like the show, if you listen, um, uh, and you want to just be a part of the community in general, you should be in our Discord at discord.gg slash four-player. Shout out to everyone new who's joined the past few weeks, I suppose. Uh, I've seen a few people trickling in here and there saying hello in the introductions channel. A lot of those people kind of say hello and then kind of fade. Like I, they don't really, I don't really see them popping up everywhere, but like, I know they're there. They're lurking. 
So yeah. shout out to those people. Um, but we do hope you'll stop by and hang out and talk about games you with us. Acknowledge the lurkers. Don't don't call out the lurkers like you see them. That just scare them away. <laughs> lurkers yeah. want to lurk. Uh, lurkers do want to lurk. And shout out to all the lurkers in chat who come by to watch us record these. We appreciate it. Um, but anyways, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back next week. I should really start splitting these shows into two episodes I, or two segments again because this is a long segment. So I done goofed. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a good night. Be good to each other. Play video games. Good night.